Hello everyone. Am I live? Can you see me? Can you hear me? Kindly someone from the audience give me confirmation that I'm clearly visible and audible. Okay, give me a minute to confirm that I'm clearly visible, audible. Yeah, I hope it's working. Yes, I hope it's working. So yes, I welcome you all for today's session. A very, very good morning to all of you. I am Dr. Priyanka Sajdevia and today I'm here to start a new series that is bacteriology. So today I'm going to cover the important bacteria back to back in a compact manner. Uh, this series will be specially useful for the aspirants uh, of second prof MBBS students who are going to write their university exam this year. So I'm going to give you complete bacteriology at a glance, right? So without wasting any time, I'm starting with bacteriology. Give me a thumbs up in the chat box if I'm clearly visible, audible, just for confirmation if video, audio, everything is clear to you. Kindly give me a thumbs up in the chat box. Okay, so let me start. Uh, so we know that bacteria are of two types whether they are gram positive or they are gram negative based on the gram staining bacteria are of two types you can see gram positive gram negative the two types of the bacteria gram positive bacteria are violet in color gram negative bacteria are red in color based on gram staining bacteria are of two type right based on the shape again bacteria are of two type the one which are spherical are known as cocci cocus and the one which are rod shaped are known as bacillus so you can see the bacillus and the cocus. So we are combining the two things. We are combining the gram staining and we are combining the shapes. Based, based on gram staining, the two types of bacteria, based on the shape, the two types of the bacteria, we are doing the combination. So there are four types of bacteria. Gram positive cocci, gram positive bacilli. Gram negative cocci, gram negative bacilli. So likewise, we are dividing the entire bacteria into four categories, right? So, gram positive, so it is like this. So gram positive cocci, gram negative cocci, gram positive bacilli, and gram negative bacilli. So, how many bacteria are there in each category? So, let's divide the bacteria into these four groups GPC, GNC, GPB, and GNB. So, how many types of bacteria are there? GPC are only two, Staphylococcus and Streptococcus. So I will start with Staphylococcus and Streptococcus first. So the very first bacteria I'm going to teach you are Staphylococcus and Streptococcus. That is, we will first finish gram-positive cocci. Then we will move on gram-negative cocci. Here also, there are two bacteria, Neisseria and Moraxella. Neisseria and Moraxella. So after that, we will move on Neisseria and Moraxella. So in short, we will complete cocci. First, we will complete cocci, gram positive and gram negative. So this is my sequence of teaching in this series. I will start with gram positive cocci and then I will move on gram negative cocci. After that, coming on bacilli, gram positive bacilli. They are five in number. The mnemonic is A, B, C, D, M. So it is actinomastis, it is bacillus, clostridium, diphtheria and uh, the last one is mycobacterium. So these are the gram positive bacilli. And gram negative bacilli remaining all. The remaining all bacteria will be gram negative bacilli. So after finishing cocci, we will move on bacilli. And we will try to finish maximum bacteria today in this marathon. So without wasting any further time, uh, let me start with the first bacteria Staphylococcus. Are you people with me? Shall I start with the first bacteria Staphylococcus? We are starting with the first bacteria Staphylococcus. Now all the bacteria, first three bacteria we are taking together. Staphylococcus, that is Step aureus, is the main bacteria in Staphylococcus. In Streptococcus, I am going to teach you two bacteria. One is Streptococcus pyogens and one is Pneumococcus, which is a type of Streptococcus only. So, in the first chapter, Staphylococcus, I am going to teach you only one bacteria, that is Step aureus, which is the main bacteria there. But in chapter second, that is Streptococcus, I am going to teach you two main bacteria. One is Streptococcus pyogens and one is Streptococcus pneumonia, also known as Pneumococcus. So, likewise, we will complete the two chapters the first two chapters that is staphylococcus and streptococcus uh, both of them are gram positive cocci so we will finish gram positive cocci in this manner all the bacteria i'm going to teach you in the common headings i request all the students to make this comparative table with me it will be very very easy for you to understand the complete bacteriology if you uh, learn the bacteriology in a comparative manner now, in the latest syllabus, the new syllabus, the bacteriology or the complete microbiology is system-wise, right? So, all the organisms which are causing infections of the GIT, infections of the CVS, infection of the CNS, infection of the respiratory tract like this. But my suggestion for the students to learn the bacteria individually and in the pathogenesis, write down the systems. Like for Steph aureus, I would like to write here skin and I would like to write here GIT. 
and likewise i will like write the systems everywhere and i will write the diseases in each system so in, in skin it causes um, you know abscess in the skin it causes multiple other diseases in the skin in git it causes food poisoning it causes toxic shock syndrome so likewise i will write all the systems and in the end i will do it system wise i will uh, you have to see the pathogenesis of all the 40 bacteria i am going to teach you in a comparative manner and then you have to pick only the bacteria which are involving git so those will be the bacteria of git then you have to pick the bacteria which are involving skin you have to pick the bacteria which are involving cns you got my point so in this way we are learning bacteriology system wise as well as individual bacteria so it will be easy for you so whenever any bacteria coming in your exam uh it will be like a case scenario a case scenario will be given to you there is a patient complaining of this 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 and uh, on this investigation it is either gram positive or gram negative it is either cocci or bacilli this test is positive this test is negative ultimately you have to reach on the diagnosis and after diagnosis in the question if it is a long question the university exam they will ask you to write everything about it to write the morphology culture biochemical reaction antigenic structure resistance virulence factor pathogenesis lab diagnosis treatment prophylaxis so it is a long question so we will prepare all the bacteria for the long question so my headings are constant i will start with intro in the intro i will tell you the name of the scientist who has discovered it but it is not compulsory to learn the name of the scientist it's your choice it is more important for the mcq purpose morphology is really very important in morphology you have to tell me four things whether the bacteria is gram positive or gram negative cocci or bacilli right the second third and fourth whether the bacteria is capsulated yes or no whether the bacteria is spore forming yes or no or whether the bacteria is motile yes or no so i will tell you mnemonics and easy way to retain the capsule spore and motility so just understand my way of teaching is somewhat different and um, believe me it is the easiest way of retain retaining the entire bacteriology otherwise bacteriology is very very volatile once you study you will forget that very next day right so we will continue the bacteriology in this sequence only without wasting any time i'm starting the first bacteria uh, step aureus so i'm starting the first chapter staphylococcus right in staphylococcus please write down the introduction in the introduction you can write down the name of the scientist you can see here who has discovered staphylococcus so sir alexander osgan had had no, given the nomenclature of the staphylococcus so staphylococcus the word is given by sir alexander right and rosenbach has named step aureus and step albus the two main staphylococcus so these are the name of the scientists if you want to learn it's okay if you don't want to learn you can skip this portion also coming on the classification classification is based on catalase you know now as i have told you there are two gram positive cocci two gram positive cocci what are two gram positive cocci staphylococcus and streptococcus how you differentiate between them how you will differentiate between them the main test which differentiate between them is catalase so first apply catalase if they are catalase positive they are staphylococcus if they are catalase negative they are streptococcus so catalase is the main test which differentiates staphylococcus from streptococcus this is the biggest clue given in clinical questions so if any question containing information gram positive cocci and catalase positive so the answer is staphylococcus if any clinical question contains the um, uh, information like gram positive cocci and catalase negative the answer is streptococcus everyone give me a thumbs up you got my point so you have to you have to look for the clues so if these two clues are there answer is this if these two clues are there answer is this so it is the catalase which decide whether it is staphylococcus or streptococcus because both of them are gram positive cocci give me a thumbs up everyone give me a thumbs up topi have you got it what about others i can't see the names right the classification this is the classification you can see here gram positive cocci whether they are catalase positive or they are catalase negative right catalase positive they are staphylococcus and catalase negative they are streptococcus now staphylococcus are further divided based on coagulase so the first test was catalase now the second test is coagulase if they are coagulase positive it is step aureus staphylococcus aureus is the bacteria which is pathogenic and it causes diseases in human it produces golden yellow colonies and it produces pigment that's why it produces golden yellow colonies and it is pathogenic it is toxigenic it produces toxin it causes diseases in human the coagulase negative staphylococcus is known as staphylococcus epidermidis this one is non pathogenic it is it is not causing diseases in human um it is a common cell it is non pathogenic non toxigenic and non pigment producing that's why form white colonies 
so the golden yellow golden yellow colony is pathogenic and toxicity that is the feature of step aureus and non toxicity non pathogenicity and no pigment white colonies is a property of step epidermidis so these are the two main staphylococcus in your syllabus everyone give me a thumbs up so that classification based on coagulase so basically what i am saying i am saying first apply the taste test catalase based on the catalase based on the catalase see whether it is positive or negative if it is positive it is staphylococcus step if it is negative it is streptococcus now on strep staphylococcus again apply the second test the second test you have to apply is coagulase coagulase not coagulase positive or negative if it is coagulase positive it is step aureus and if it is coagulase negative it is step epidermidis epidermidis this is the complete classification i want thumbs up from all of you so samir osama sufi i guess you got the classification so classification is based on two properties what are the two properties can you enumerate first catalase which differentiates step and strep and second coagulase which differentiate the two type of the staphylococcus step aureus which is pathogenic which is pathogenic toxigenic and produce pigment and that's why golden yellow colonies colonies and step epidermidis which is non toxigenic non pathogenic and produces white colonies so this is the complete classification one more difference between step and strep step and strep the two gram positive foci both of them are gram positive that's why violet color and both of them are foci foci that's why spherical but the step occurs in bunches like grapes can you see the bunches like grapes angur ki gucche ke jaisa hai and strap occurs in chains it occurs in chains so you can see the difference it is occurring in bunches it is occurring in chains but both of them are sphere that's why both of them are foci and both of them are gram positive that's why both of them are violet in color have you have you noticed here so can you see this diagram please appreciate they are in bunches staphylococcus can you see this diagram they are in chains that's why streptococcus so staphylococcus versus streptococcus we have seen the differences right we have seen the differences between staphylococcus so basically what we have learned we have learned that staphylococcus and streptococcus the one similarity between them both of them are gram positive both of them are foci that is spherical so both of them are gram positive both of them are foci but step is catalase catalase positive and strep is catalase negative right that is the difference the first difference second step occurs in bunches and strep occurs in chains that is the second difference so these are the two differences these are the two similarities between step and strep concepts should be crystal clear shall i move further shall i move further so this is the classification the classification of staphylococcus is based on coagulase the one which produces golden yellow colonies which is coagulase positive pathogenic and toxigenic is step aureus step aureus also known as step pyogens whatever the one and the same thing either you say step aureus or you say step pyogens one and the same thing right that is the synonym that is the this one this one i am talking about that is coagulase positive and coagulase negative produces white colonies because it doesn't produce any pigment non pathogenic non toxigenic so it is step epidermidis or step albus so i am talking about this one you can say based on the coagulase we are dividing the entire staphylococcus the one which is coagulase positive is step aureus or step pyogens one and the same thing the one which is coagulase negative is step epidermidis or step albus one and the same thing you must know the other names exam mein albus aaya hai epidermidis aaya it is the same thing exam mein exam mein aureus aaya hai ya pyogens aaya it is one and the same thing so you must know the synonyms give me a thumbs up give me a thumbs up we are done coagulase positive coagulase negative coagulase positive are toxigenic pathogenic that's why virulent coagulase negative are non toxigenic non pathogenic so no not virulent coagulase positive produce golden yellow colonies coagulase negative produces white colonies the example here is step aureus also known as step pyogens the examples here are step epidermidis and also known as step albus so one and the same thing these are the synonyms everyone give me a thumbs up so classification is done there are more than 32 types of staphylococcus but we do not study all in our syllabus the two are important what two are important mainly i will teach you step aureus step epidermidis and step saprophyticus these two are common cell actually they do not cause us diseases in human the main i am going to teach you step aureus let me start the first chapter step aureus let me do the inauguration of the first chapter step aureus i request all my dear student to please 
please fill this table with me if you are not taking a notebook and a pen with me and start filling this table you are doing biggest mistake of your life if you are a second prof student and going to write your university exam this year so please while watching now only please make this table it will be very easy for you the day before your exam please revise this table and i guarantee every question from the bacteriology will be from my notes only so start step or yes we have already seen the introduction in the introduction i have told you the name of the scientist sir alexander sir alexander orisgen have discovered the step or yes coming on morphology let me start with morphology in morphology in morphology always whenever i say morphology you have to tell me five things number one whether it is gram positive and gram negative pehle wo batao dusra whether it is cocci or bacilli dusra ye batao third whether capsule present or absent whether spore present or absent whether motility present or absent so in morphology it is fixed you have to comment on these five things comment on these five things so for step aureus it is gram positive not gram negative it is cocci not bacilli it is capsule negative spore negative and motility negative no capsule no spore no motility so this is the answer for my bacteria the first bacteria step aureus write down it is gram positive it is cocci capsule negative spore negative motility negative so that's all about the morphology everyone who is watching me live please give me a thumbs up in morphology can you see it is gram positive cocci can you appreciate the spheres spheres means cocci spheres and can you appreciate the color color is violet violet color means gram positive yes or no so it is gram positive cocci occurring in bunches can you appreciate the bunches the bunches of the grapes it is not chains right so that is the thing so these are the real diagrams appreciate the bunches appreciate the cocci appreciate they are spherical yes so they are gram positive they are cocci they are non capsulated non sporing non motile so capsule negative spore negative motility negative now many students ask me that ma'am it's it become very difficult for us to learn the three things capsule spore and motility you know various combinations are possible step me to easy hai everything is negative so it will be easy for you to learn all three things are negative no capsule no spore no motility but in some bacteria capsule positive but other two negative spore positive but other two negative motility positive but other two negative or two of them are positive one is negative or all of them are positive so there are 40 bacteria in your syllabus learning capsule spore and motility for each of them will become really tedious for you it is the first bacteria looking very simple ma'am everything is negative it's okay but whenever i move on the second third fourth fifth fifth bacteria you will become confused so there is one solution for it for permanent solution i'm telling you one permanent solution to learn how capsule spore and motility you have to learn for all bacteria once for all once for all so i'm giving you three mnemonics now i'm giving you three mnemonics in that mnemonic i am giving you nine bacteria for capsule who are positive rest all are negative only these five nine bacteria have capsule otherwise remaining all other bacteria are non capsulated first learn that right i will give you the mnemonic right now spore forming there are only four bacteria in the world who have spores who form spores otherwise no other bacteria apart from those four form spore so all other are non spore forming right for motility i will give you 6 plus 6 total 12 bacteria right they are motile by 6 plus 6 Uh, i am not giving complete 12 together because motility is by two types of flagella there are two type motility is because of flagella the bacteria which is having flagella that will be motile the bacteria who do not have flagella will be not flagella are the legs like humans have legs now so the human who has having leg that can move the human who is not having leg cannot move in the same way flagella is the leg of bacteria so flagella jiske paas hai wo move karega jiske paas nahi hai wo move nahi karega that is the point now flagella is of two type right one is polar flagella present at the pole of the bacteria one is peritrichous flagella present all around the bacteria so i will tell you everything so there are six bacteria which are motile by polar flagella six bacteria which are motile by peritrichous flagella so i will give you two mnemonics here right so total 12 bacteria in the world are motile apart from these 12 none of the bacteria is motile so if you learn these three mnemonic now the problem is solved you apply these three mnemonic for all bacteria and see whether they are capsule yes or no whether they are spore forming yes or no whether they are motile yes or no so various combinations are there maybe capsule present but these two are negative maybe capsule negative but these two are positive maybe spore positive but these two are negative anything can happen multiple combinations are there so don't learn the combinations apply in mnemonic so let me come on the three mnemonics am i too fast am i too fast shall i continue so this is the first mnemonic the first mnemonic is the capsulated bacteria the nine bacteria which are capsulated Shall I tell you the mnemonic? The mnemonic is PACIB MCV. 
Pakibo, Pakibo. MCV. You know in pathology we have MCV, MCH, MCHC. So MCV is pet cell volume, right? So it is Pakibo MCV. L learn like that. Or you can make your own mnemonic if you are not liking it. So P stands for pneumococcus, right? A stands for anthrax, bacillus anthrax. K for Klebsiella. I for influenza. Y for Yersinia. B for Bordetella. M for meningococcus. C for Clostridium. But not all Clostridium, only two Clostridium have capsules. Clostridium perfringens and Butyricum. Only these two Clostridium have capsule. None of the other Clostridium have capsule. And V for Vibrio. It is not the main Vibrio cholerae. It is Vibrio parahemolyticus. Right. Have you got it? So what is the mnemonic? The mnemonic is Akibo. MCV. Count. They are nine in number. They are nine in number. Can you tell me the full form? It is Nemococcus meningococcus. So two cocos are there, pneumococcus, meningococcus. This is anthrax, bacillus anthrax. This is Klebsiella. This is H. influenzae. Influenzae ka aai hai ye, hemophilus influenzae. Yersinia, bordetella. It is not borrelia, it is bordetella. C is clostridium, but only two clostridium. Clostridium uh, butyricum and perfringens. Not all clostridium have capsule. B is vibrio, but it is not the main vibrio cholerae. It is vibrio parahemolyticus. Apart from this, any other bacteria is non-capsulated. Have you got, in this mnemonic, is Staphylococcus coming? No, Staphylococcus is not coming in this mnemonic. That's why my first bacteria, Staphylococcus, is non-capsulated. I have commented that. Give me a thumbs up. Coming on the second mnemonic, spore forming. This mnemonic, I will tell you once again. This first chapter of bacteria, so I will tell you this mnemonic. On every chapter, you have to apply these mnemonic. I will not tell you these mnemonics in every chapter, but you have to apply it everywhere. Right? Coming on the spore forming, there are only four bacteria in the world which for, form spore. No other bacteria forms spore. The mnemonic is BSC chemistry. BSC chemistry. So B stands for bacillus. The two bacillus, anthrax and subtilus. Both are forming spore. S is sporosarcina. It is a bacteria. Naam mein hai sporo hai. That's why it forms spore. Sporosarcina. The two C are there. The first C is clostridium. All clostridium in the world. There are many clostridium. All of them form spores. And the last C is Coxella burnetii. The last C is Coxella burnetii. Everyone give me a thumbs up. So these are the four bacteria which produce spores in the world. Otherwise, any bacteria apart from these four bacteria, none of them form spores. Right. Coming on motile bacteria. So motility is by two types of flagella. You know, there are some bacteria. There are. Let me draw a bacteria. This is a bacteria. There are some bacteria which is having a polar flagella. The flagella is present at the pole. This is known as polar flagella. And there, there are some bacteria which is having flagella all around. This is known as peritricor. Peritricus. Everywhere. Peri means everywhere. Peritricus flagella. So there are six bacteria in the world which is having polar flagella and six bacteria in the world which is having peritricus flagella. So all of them are motile. The, these six are motile because of polar flagella. These six are motile because of peritricus flagella. So total 12 bacteria in the world are motile by flagella. Otherwise, they are not motile. So let me give you the mnemonic for peritricus flagella. The mnemonic is in front of you. Cute baby sleep. Cute baby sleep. S-L-E-P. Sleep. Double E name. So cute ka C is clostridia. All clostridia are motile except perfringes and titani. B. B. Baby ka B is bacillus. All bacillus are motile except bacillus anthrax. And S, Salmonella. All Salmonella are motile except Salmonella gelurum pullerum. So three exceptions are there. Right. L is Listeria. E is E. coli. And P is Proteus. Right. So Listeria, E. coli, Proteus. These are the six bacteria which are motile by Peritricus flagella. The flagella here is Peritricus flagella. Can you see here? Now these are the list of six bacteria which are motile by polar flagella. The mnemonic is very protective solution HCL. Very Protective solution, VPS, HCL, HCL, hydrochloric acid, right, HCL. So, V stands for Vibrio, all Vibrio, P for Pseudomonas, S for Spirochetes, H for H. pylori, H. pylori ka full form kya hai? Helicobacter, Helicobacter ka bada bhai Campylobacter. So, both brothers are there, Helicobacter, Campylobacter, right, and L is Legionella. Now, let me write, let me write, Eritricus flagella, Polar flagella. So tell me the name of six bacteria here. Tell me the name of the six bacteria here. Who will tell me? Who will tell me? Peritricus ka mnemonic kya hai? Cute baby sleep. S L E P sleep. Cute baby sleep. Or polar ka mnemonic kya hai? Very protective solution. H C L. 
everyone give me a thumbs up everyone give me a thumbs up so see l is coming both way this l is listeria and this l is legionella don't get confused right p is also coming both ways p right this p is proteus and this p is pseudomonas so don't get confused s is also coming both ways right so this s is salmonella and this s is pyrochetes spiro keeps everyone give me a thumbs up now please don't get confused jo teen letters common hai s l p wo maine clarify kiye hain otherwise nothing is common right yahan pe uske alawa c b aur e hai this is clostridium bacillus and e coli yahan pe vibrio helicobacter campylobacter that's it everyone yes c b common hai you can say so this c is clostridium and this c is campylobacter along with helicobacter everyone give me a thumbs up i tried hard yes osama absolutely right so only 12 bacteria on the world are motile except these 12 bacteria none of them is motile uh, uh, so total uh, let me uh, summarize so i have told you the nine bacteria in the world which are capsulated i have told you the four bacteria in the world which forms spore and i have told you 12 bacteria in the world which are motile six by peritrichus flagella six by polar flagella the mnemonic here is pakeb mcv i will not say the full form again you know the pakeb mcv the mnemonic here is bsc chemistry the mnemonic here is cute baby sleep slp sleep the mnemonic here is very protective solution hcl now apply all these mnemonics for my chapter my chapter today is staphylococcus i am teaching you staphylococcus right now staphylococcus is staphylococcus coming in this mnemonic no so it is a non capsulated bacteria is staphylococcus coming in this mnemonic no this s is sporosarcina not staphylococcus so it is a non spore forming bacteria is staphylococcus coming in this mnemonic no because this s is salmonella and this s is spirochetes it is not staphylococcus so it is non motile so staphylococcus is non capsulated non spore forming non motile this is my summary have you got it supi radha krishnan osama sunat everyone shall i continue so this is my first chapter so please everyone write down the morphology here in the morphology write down five things number one write down it is gram positive number two it is cocci not bacilli then capsule negative spore negative motility negative i am done with morpho likewise you have to write morpho for for all bacteria write down gram positivity then cocci or bacilli and then capsule spore motility for capsule spore motility apply the mnemonic for each bacteria and see various combinations are possible give me a thumbs up i'm coming on the culture i'm coming on the third heading culture culture for staph aureus i'm going to teach you six cultures so write down the name of the six cultures and write down one one line in front of them and describe in your own words right so let me teach you culture characteristics for staph aureus i'm teaching you the first chapter staph aureus right so culture mein i am going to teach you six culture the first is nutrient agar on nutrient agar can you see this is nutrient agar they are forming golden yellow colonies the word here is golden yellow smooth colonies golden yellow color pigment ki wajah se they are forming golden yellow smooth smooth glistering glistering means chamakti hui colonies can you see it is looking like oil paint it is looking like yellow color oil paint on the wall right it is known as oil paint appearance this appearance you have to write in your exam it is also a mcq oil paint appearance oil paint appearance what is the name of yellow yellow pigment which is giving yellow colony can you tell me uh, can you tell me uh, the yellow pigment the yellow pigment here is lipoprotein bind to carotene this is providing the yellow color so that is thing that is a thing radha krishnan is asking what do you mean by facultative facultative anaerobes means it is there are two types of anaerobe radha krishnan anaerobe anaerobe means they survive in absence of oxygen they do not require oxygen for survival one are obligative obligative means compulsory and one are facultative facultative means not compulsory facultative means not compulsory so obligative if you give oxygen here they will die they will just die they cannot tolerate oxygen at all that's why they compulsorily survive in absence of oxygen it is compulsory for them but in facultative if you give oxygen they will not die they do not like it but they can survive wo kaam chala lenge facultative yani kaam chala lenge lekin unko acha nahi lag raha so that is the meaning of facultative radha krishnan have you got it facultative means not not compulsory right either they are aerobes or facultative anaerobes right so nutrient agar is done on nutrient agar you have to write they form golden yellow color colony smooth glistering giving oil paint appearance that's such you can learn the name of the pigment which is giving golden yellow color right uh, okay you see oil paint 
typical oil paint glistering gold and yellow colonies appreciate the gold and yellow colonies looking like typical oil paint appearance coming on blood agar the second one is the blood agar on blood agar there are three type of hemolysis you know alpha beta gamma what do you mean by whenever i say blood agar now you have to take which you have to tell me which type of hemolysis on blood agar you have to comment on alpha beta gamma always 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 in all bacteria alpha means partial hemolysis beta means complete hemolysis and gamma means no hemolysis please learn this is the basic difference alpha beta gamma so what do you mean by that what do you mean by hemolysis uh, i'm teaching you the basics right this is a blood agar blood agar is made up of rbcs so these all are rbcs now imagine this is the colony of my bacteria which is surrounded by rbcs because it is on the blood agar so this colonies of the bacteria surrounded by rbcs now these are the bacteria let me draw the bacteria inside the colony the blue one are the bacteria so these bacteria can do three things either they do hemolysis of the surrounding rbcs completely that is beta hemolysis beta means completely they will degrade the rbcs surrounding rbcs they will degrade it completely and they will form a ring here that is beta hemolysis they, they form a colorless ring right alpha means they do partial hemolysis kuch rbc ko degrade karenge kuch ko nahi karenge they partially degrade the rbc and they produce a green color zone around it not colorless beta means complete colorless zone and green zone is incomplete right and gamma there are some bacteria who do not degrade rbc so it is known as gamma gamma means no hemolysis so that is the meaning those who don't know about it everyone give me a thumbs up everyone give me a thumbs up so blood agar pe they produce beta my chapter is staphylococcus staphylo produce cocus produce beta hemolysis on blood agar that is complete hemolysis complete hemolysis so it is surrounded by a colorless zone can you see see these are the colonies on the blood agar please appreciate the colonies i am zooming the colonies in the next section i will show you the zoom version you see these are the colonies please appreciate colony to theek hai colony ke around can you appreciate this colorless zone colorless zone the zone here is colorless around the each colony please appreciate this colorless zone it is not green zone colorless zone that is it is beta hemolysis that is complete hemolysis that is on blood agar blood agar is done nutrient agar is done blood is done coming on mcconkey agar the third agar is mcconkey mcconkey always on mcconkey agar there are two types of um, uh, bacteria the one which are lactose mcconkey mcconkey there are two type of bacteria mcconkey contains lactose mcconkey contains lactose as a sugar lactose is a sugar so there are bacteria which causes lactose fermentation lactose fermenter and there are some bacteria which do not causes lactose fermentation non lactose fermenter so the bacteria which causes lactose fermentation they produce they produce pink colonies and the bacteria which do not cause lactose fermentation they produce yellow colonies staph aureus produce somewhat pink colonies light pink can you see the pink color colonies here appreciate the pink color here on on mcconkey it is pink color colonies because of lactose fermentation they are lactose fermenter they they can ferment the lactose they produce pink colony that is about the mcconkey agar till now we have done three agar nutrient agar blood agar mcconkey agar can anyone tell me the summary of the three on nutrient agar they produce golden yellow color glistering smooth colony known as oil paint appearance oil paint appearance on blood agar they produce beta hemolysis that is complete hemolysis that is they produce a colorless zone they produce a colorless zone around each colony on mcconkey they produce pink colony because they are lactose fermenter this is the summary till now coming on the next and fourth agar next and the fourth agar you can see is the milk agar milk agar is same as that of nutrient agar it is same as that of nutrient agar only exception apart from nutrient it contains white color milk milk is opaque white color right so nutrient agar is colorless but milk agar is white in color so here also they produce golden yellow colonies can you see the golden yellow colonies please appreciate these golden yellow oil paint appearance colony so you should ask me why you are you are doing a separate agar milk agar we have already done on the nutrient agar so milk agar alag se aap kyun le rahe ho nutrient agar is transparent transparent pe golden yellow itna acha nahi dikhta jitna white opaque background pe dikhta hai if the background is transparent golden yellow color is not very good visible but if the background is white and opaque the golden yellow color will be very good contrast so that is the reason easily the colonies are easily recognized against the opaque white background right here also golden yellow oil paint appearance colonies are there golden yellow colonies that is that is milk agar the fifth agar the fifth agar is phenolphthalein phosphatase agar ppa 
phenolphthalein phosphatase agar right it is a indicator medium it is a indicator medium it contains the enzyme phenolphthalein right it contains an enzyme which degrades the phenolphthalein chap aureus bacteria contains an enzyme that degrades phenolphthalein phosphatase and that produces a color can you see uh, it produces pink color when ammonia gas is passed so can you see this is the ppa agar on ppa agar these are the colonies golden yellow colonies are there whenever these colonies are growing and you pass ammonia gas over it so the the golden yellow colonies will convert into pink color you see jo jo golden yellow tha sab pink mein convert ho gaya on passing ammonia so it is a indicator medium the golden yellow colonies convert pink in color under ammonium hydroxide the fume of the ammonium hydroxide give me a thumbs up last is selective aur kuch yaad ho na ho selective media har bacteria ka yaad hona chahiye you have 40 bacteria in your syllabus you should know 40 selective medium each for each bacteria it is on the tip of your tongue if you want to crack your university as well as any competitive exam selective medias are must to learn i will tell you three selective media or chap aureus the first one the first one is salt milk agar the first one is the salt agar or salt milk agar in the milk agar you add sodium chloride nacl that is, that will become salt milk agar the first is the one second is mannitol salt agar that is second mannitol salt agar and third is ludlam medium ludlam medium contain lithium chloride and telluride that is the combination that is ludlam so what are the three selective media salt milk agar number 1 salt milk agar number 2 mannitol mannitol agar salt milk agar mannitol agar and third is ludlam ludlam medium or ludlam agar that's it these are the three selective media you can make a mnemonic if you are confused sml sml you can make some mnemonic right sml so salt milk agar mannitol agar ludlam agar these are the three selective medium i am done i am done these are the three selective medium you can see i am done with the culture can you enumerate the culture any one of you i have taught you nutrient agar the first one the second one was blood agar the third one was mcconkey agar the fourth one was phenolphthalein phosphatase agar ppa phenolphthalein phosphatase agar the fifth one was milk agar and the last one is the selective medium can you tell me the summary anyone osama radha krishnan sufi anyone can tell me the summary yes you will participate on nutrient agar write down golden yellow colonies which is giving oil paint appearance oil paint appearance the same will be on milk agar milk agar pe bhi golden yellow colonies which is giving oil paint appearance but this is better visible on the milk as compared to nutrient because milk the background is opaque white and on nutrient the background is transparent on blood agar write down beta hemolysis beta means complete hemolysis so a clear colorless zone is there on mcconkey write down pink colonies because they are lactose fermenter that's why pink colonies on ppa write down initially colonies are golden yellow on passing the fumes of ammonium hydroxide the golden yellow colonies convert into pink color so that is the summary of ppa selective media are three in number i expect all of you to learn the three selective media sml so it is salt uh it is salt what was the thing salt milk agar salt milk agar number 1 mannitol agar number 2 and ludlam agar number 3 is pe bahut mcqs aate hain you can't imagine selective media of all bacteria is must to learn everyone give me a thumbs up jitne audience hote hain thumbs up do pehle everyone give me a thumbs up shall i proceed ahead okay i must last is liquid media okay you can leave the liquid media mein turbidity hota hai okay so i am done with the six culture media 1 2 3 4 5 6 write down the summary that's it coming on the next heading biochemical reaction so i am going to teach you three four biochemical reactions just enumerate them like culture enumerate them so starting the biochemical reaction first is sugar fermentation for all bacteria you have to tell me the sugar fermentation sugar fermentation mein kya kya batana hai whenever any bacteria ferment a sugar ferment any sugar sugars are of various types it can be glucose fructose lactose maltose you know multiple type of sugars are there mannitol multiple multiple sugars are there when bacteria ferment any sugar so first tell me the name of the specific sugar which the bacteria is fermenting my bacteria currently is staphylococcus i am teaching you staph aureus so staph aureus ki baat karo kaun si sugar ferment karta hai or else all sugar agar specifically you are not telling me so i will consider all sugar right now that is the first thing you have to tell me the second thing you have to tell me after fermenting sugar that all bacteria produce acid 
all bacteria produce acid all by default but some produce gas some do not produce gas so you tell me about staph aureus acid to banega hi banega but with gas ki without gas that you have to tell me so that is the summary of the sugar for all bacteria you have to comment on two things in the sugar tell me the name of the sugar which that particular bacteria i am teaching you that comment that particular sugar so tell me the name of that particular sugar if it is particular sugar if it is not any particular sugar so say all sugars right so tell me the name of the sugars or dusra acid to banega hi banega acid will always form acid with gas or without gas that you have to tell me give me a thumbs up for staphylococcus i am teaching you staph aureus it produces acid without gas acid to banega hi banega in all bacteria acid is formed but here gas is not formed so acid with without gas right and um, uh, all sugars uh, it is uh, fermenting all sugars except mannitol it do not ferment mannitol mannitol is fermented by staph uh, aureus okay i'm sorry it ferment all sugars but mannitol is of importance why because mannitol is the sugar which is fermented only by staph aureus not by other staphylococcus you got my point my point is that there are many type of staphylococcus right mannitol is a sugar which is fermented by staph aureus not by other staphylococcus so only this staph aureus ferment mannitol other staphylococcus that is staphylococcus albus epidermidis they do not ferment mannitol so mannitol is of much important here apart from mannitol it ferment all other sugars also lekin all other yahan pe bhi hain lekin mannitol can differentiate the staph aureus from other staphylococcus you got my point yahan pe sugar ke naam mein aapko mannitol karna hai so how you do it so in the test tube we take the sugar can you see this is a test tube it contain various sugar just suppose it contain mannitol it contains fructose it contains galactose it contains sucrose we take various sugars in each of them we will put the bacteria we will see the color change if bacteria produces acid acid causes change of the litmus now it contains litmus also so litmus may change of color ho jayega na so change of color indicate that acid is produced and the sugar is fermented ye to acid hua gas kaise pata chalta hai whether bacteria is producing gas or yes or no how you will prove it so you take another test tube which is inverted can you see the inverted test tube inside the main test tube this test tube is inverted test tube this test tube is known as durram durram test tube so in the inverted test tube see the bubbles if the bubbles of the gas are present gas is produced if bubbles are absent gas is not produced so in our case whenever we take any sugar especially mannitol and we will we will fill the fill the main test tube with the sugar and we will take a inverted test tube durram test tube here and whenever we will put our bacteria here my bacteria step aureus step aureus here so color change will take place color change that is acid production is present but there are no gas no bubbles here so gas is absent so acid present but gas absent this is how we do the experiment give me a thumbs up give me a thumbs up so first is sugar fermentation in biochemical reaction the first is sugar you know the summary of the sugar second is catalase we will perform a catalase test uh, this bacteria contains an enzyme catalase they are catalase positive that is the that is the test which differentiates staphylococcus and streptococcus staphylococcus are catalase positive streptococcus are catalase negative so how catalase test is performed what is the principle what is the principle of catalase test listen the principle is in front of you so okay what we will do listen now we will take a slide this is a slide can you see this is a slide on the slide i will take one drop of h2o2 one drop of hydrogen peroxide h2o2 and i will mix one drop of the bacterial suspension one drop of the bacterial suspension that is staph aureus that is my bacteria currently staph aureus i am mixing the two with a stirrer i am mixing the two with a stirrer right so if this bacteria that is staph aureus contains the enzyme catalase it can contain it do not contain i don't know so i am watching so if it imagine if it contains catalase that catalase will act on h2o2 and it will degrade the h2o2 into h2o that is water and o2 so catalase act on h2o2 and catalase degrade h2o2 into h2o and o2 so o2 is visible in the form of h2o the water is it is liquid but o2 is gas so it will be seen in the form of the bubbles you see the test here you see so here i have mixed in this test here in both of the slide i have taken two slide can you see this is slide number 1 and this is slide number 2 i am doing the experiment right here i have taken one drop of h2o2 here also i have taken one drop of h2o2 right here with one drop of h2o2 i have mixed staphylococcus here with one drop of h2o2 i have mixed streptococcus you got my point so here staphylococcus contain the enzyme catalase they are catalase positive 
that's why catalyst is acting on h2o2 and converting into oxygen so oxygen is seen in the form of the bubbles so it is catalyst positive right here streptococcus do not contain catalyst so it is catalyst negative it is cat so catalyst is not present so h2o2 will remain as h2o2 only o2 gas is not formed so no bubbles are visible so it is catalyst negative so this is the principle everyone give me a thumbs up everyone this is how we perform the test so if you are a second prof student catalyst test coming or any test is coming in your exam by default you have to write three things number one you have to write the principle what is the principle behind it what is the principle behind it number two you have to write the method or procedure method or procedure and number three you have to write the interpretation don't learn anything if you understand you can make your own words you can in your own words you can describe it so principle method and interpretation for catalyst test who will tell me the summary what is the principle principle may write down h2o2 get converted to h2o plus o2 by the enzyme catalyst this is the principle of this test what is the method write down the step take one slide take one drop of h2o2 take one drop of bacterial saline suspension mix them with a stirrer right mix them with a stirrer wait for five minutes and see whether the bubbles are present or absent interpretation if bubbles are present catalyst is positive if bubbles are absent catalyst is negative this is how you have to describe the test if you are writing like this you will get full three marks or full five marks everyone give me a thumbs up so that is about the catalyst test that is the summary of the catalyst test you got my point shall i proceed so principle is written in front of you you have to read by your own and describe in your own words the enzyme catalyst causes the breakdown of h2o2 into oxygen and water so this is the principle this is the principle the next is now we have done two biochemical reaction the first was sugar second is catalyst catalyst but the next is lipase it also contain lipase catalyst ke sath lipase enzyme bhi hai it also contains lipase how you will prove it that it contains lipase also so take a egg yolk medium agar take a agar which contains egg egg hai uske andar egg egg hai uske andar that agar so that agar is the egg yolk egg yolk medium or egg yolk agar and produce the colonies of step aureus here and you see these are the colonies these are the colonies of the staph aureus around the staph aureus i can see a yellow color zone this is due to the lipase enzyme causing degradation of the egg surrounding it right so they are lipolytic lipolysis is positive and they contains lipase it is proven here it is proven here they are lipolytic the next is phosphatase they contains the enzyme phosphatase also they contains catalase they contain catalase ke liye we have done catalase test h2o2 wala lipase ke liye we have done egg yolk wala test right we have taken a agar plate and mixed egg yolk in them and produced the colonies around the colonies a yellow color zone is seen which which is proving that lipase enzyme is present the third we are proving phosphatase enzyme phosphatase enzyme can be proven on ppa medium i have already taught you ppa medium now so ppa medium take the ppa medium grow the colonies grow the staph aureus colonies can you see the staph aureus colonies all these are golden yellow color staph aureus ki colonies on the ppa medium these are the colonies on the ppa medium whenever you will pass ammonia gas over it the yellow colonies convert into pink colonies can you see yellow color here get converted to pink color here it is pink color so here the colonies become pink color from yellow it converted to pink so it is due to the phosphatase enzyme it is proven the next is dla enzyme is also present and others are also absent or present the main main test is nahi tha they are indole negative mr positive vp positive ab ye sab main detail mein nahi i am not teaching you what is mr what is vp they are mr positive vp positive but indole negative urea is positive gelatin positive and nitrates to nitrites ko bhi reduce karte hain so let me summarize the biochemical reaction biochemical reaction the most important here the most important biochemical reaction is sugar fermentation then catalase positive then uh, lipase positive then phosphatase positive phosphatase positive then dna is positive these are the enzymes so tell me one one test to prove them apart from it they are indole negative only indole negative but mr positive vp positive gelatinase positive nitrate to nitrate reduction urea is positive baki sab positive hai sirf indole negative hai these are others not really very important but you should enumerate them everyone give me a thumbs up everyone and you know the experiment for each of them the main main ka experiment pata hai catalyst kaise prove karoge by h2o2 wala reaction lipase kaise prove karoge by egg yolk wala wala test right phosphatase kaise prove karoge ppa wala test the yellow colonies get converted to pink colonies 
दिस इज हाउ यू विल प्रूव दम शुगर वाला कैसे प्रूव करोगे बाई टेकिंग ट्यूब इन साइड द मेन ट्यूब so acid is produced but gas is not produced and mannitol is the main sugar which differentiate the step aureus from other step hyaluronic everyone give me a thumbs up jitne audience utni thumbs up do you got my point shall i proceed ahead now give me a minute everyone give me a minute just a second yes so shall i proceed ahead i must so i am done with the biochemical reactions also till now we are done with introduction morphology culture the sixth culture and biochemical reactions are 11 in number you should be able to enumerate them and describe them coming on antigenic structure is not really very important but i will just uh, you know thoda sa uske bare mein bata dungi antigenic structure the antigenic structure you can see the bacteria this is the structure of the bacteria in the structure of the bacteria this is a cell membrane innermost is the cell membrane right okay let me draw it this is the cell membrane the green color after cell membrane there is cell wall this is cell wall and in some species capsule is present you will say ma'am you told us that it is non capsulated and now you are drawing capsule why it is a non capsulated bacteria yeah i agree it is a non capsulated bacteria but some of the species have capsule so see the sequence the blue one is the capsule the red one is the uh, the red one is the cell wall it is cell wall and the green one is the cell membrane it is cell membrane so these are the antigens so line say you can learn cell membrane cell wall and capsule in the cell wall three structures are present in the cell wall 1 2 3 three structures are present so in the cell wall peptidoglycan is present ticoic acid is present and and the third one you can see in the cell wall uh, ticoic acid is present peptidoglycan is present and protein a and clumping factors are present these are the four things present in the cell wall apart from its cell membrane and capsule nothing is present this is how you have to describe each of them now i am not giving you the proper description uh, of each of them it will take time that is the antigenic structure in short now i am moving to the next heading after antigenic structure i am moving to the virulence the most important topic to be discussed here is the virulence resistance is also not important antigenic structure innermost is the cell membrane then cell wall and followed by capsule capsule is made up of hyaluronic acid cell membrane is maintaining the integrity in the cell wall there are four things peptidoglycan ticoic acid protease a and clumping factor you should be able to describe each of them few few lines about them coming on virulence factor the most important what do you mean by virulence factor virulence factor hota kya hai virulence factor are the things which can causes the diseases inside human right what is virulence factor in staphylococcus i am teaching you the first chapter staphylococcus step aureus ki virulence factor kya hai do cheeze hain step aureus produces some toxin step aureus produces some enzyme these toxins and enzyme produces diseases in human so tell me the name of the toxins which produces diseases in human tell me the name of the enzymes which produces diseases in human right so let me teach you few toxins which causes diseases in human let me teach you there are four types of toxin the one is cytolytic cytolytic see the name cyto means cell lytic means destruction these are the toxins which produces which causes cell destruction second is enterotoxin entero means intestine intestine ke toxin they produces food poisoning enterotoxin produces food poisoning because they act on the intestine the third is toxic shock syndrome toxin it produces toxic shock syndrome toxic shock syndrome toxin the fourth is epidermolytic epidermis of the skin dermis epidermis skin mein hote hai na do layer so epidermis lytic so it's it will degrade the skin and produces the disease sssss scalded skin syndrome you know scalded staphylococcus scalded skin syndrome produce karega so that is the name of the disease each toxin is causing so all the cytolytic toxin they causes cell destruction and produce multiple disease enterotoxin causes food poisoning toxic shock syndrome toxin causes toxic shock syndrome and epidermolytic toxin will produce skin cut disease that is scalded skin syndrome cytolytic toxin are of five type alpha beta gamma delta and pantone pen valentine so please learn so the five type of cytolytic i am not teaching you alpha beta delta gamma and pv pantone valentine these are the name of the scientists ye pancho cell ka destruction karenge they will cause destruction of the cell give me a thumbs up give me a thumbs up these are the cytolytic toxin after the five type of the cyto alpha beta gamma delta and cyto uh, pantone valentine the second type of toxins are enterolytic cyto cytolytic ke baad enterotoxins enterotoxins are the toxins which Causes food poisoning. 
Staphylococcus can produce food poisoning. Now, my advice to all the students, please make a separate list of all the bacteria which cause food poisoning because it will be easy for you. Whenever you will get a clinical question that a man, a person, a human being is eating something and after eating, he is having diarrhea vomiting. That is, it is a typical case of food poisoning. So, what do you get in the question in the question? In a food poisoning case, what clues you have to take from the question? Number one, name the material, name the food item which the person is eating. Kiss food item may food poisoning. Hota hai. Some bacteria causes food poisoning in dairy products, in the milk. Some produces in rice, some produces in meat. So, konsi cheese khane se food poisoning hua. In a party, a man has consumed meat. In a party, a man has consumed ice cream, cheese. So, konsi cheese, name the food item. Dusi cheese incubation period. Incubation period is the biggest clue. Incubation period. After eating the food, after how many hours the patient have the symptoms, right? So incubation period is very important to identify the type of the food poisoning, the main case of the food poisoning. And third, whether first vomiting is occurring or whether first diarrhea is occurring. In some bacteria, vomiting occurs first and then diarrhea. And first, in some bacteria, diarrhea occurs first, then vomiting. So which is occurring first? That will also give you a clue. So please make a list of the food poisoning bacteria. The first bacteria I am teaching you is Step aureus. It causes food poisoning. Here food poisoning is rice khane se hoti hai. Fried rice. Especially fried rice, the Chinese rice and dairy products. Dairy products and egg. This is all food poisoning. Hota hai. Incubation period is 2 to 6 hours. After 2 to 6 hours, patient ko and here vomiting is the main feature. Vomiting and diarrhea both will occur but first vomiting occur followed by diarrhea. So that is about the enterotoxin causing the uh, Causing the, uh, you know, food poisoning. What is the mechanism? There are eight types of antirotoxin. A, B, C, D, E, F, N, H, T, F, G, H, I. Total eight types. Hote hai. Isme a is most common which cause food poisoning. A is most common which cause food poisoning. How it cause food poisoning? How it cause food poisoning? Uh, it do not cause food poisoning by acting on the intestine. It causes food poisoning by acting in the brain by stimulating vomiting center and vagus nerve center in the brain. By uh, stimulating the vagus nerve center and vomiting center in the brain. So this is the mechanism of food poisoning. Right. So I am done with cytolytic toxin, enterotoxin. The third toxin is toxic, uh, toxic shock syndrome toxin that produces toxic shock syndrome and in toxic shock syndrome patient have multiple organ failure. And last is epidermolytic toxin. Epidermolytic toxin acts on the skin. The epidermis of the skin, it is of two type A and B. One is heat stable, one is heat labile. And it produces SSSS. The name of the disease is SSSS. Staphylococcus scalded skin syndrome. Staphylococcus scalded skin syndrome. So the complete epidermis is separated from dermis. Can you see? The epidermis is separated. This disease is SSSS. It is produced by, this disease is produced by this toxin. Epidermolytic toxin. So I am done with the four types of the toxins. Cytolytic, cytolytic causes generalized cell destruction. Anterotoxin, it acts on intestine and causes food poisoning. Toxic shock syndrome toxin causes toxic shock syndrome. And epidermolytic toxin acts on the skin and causes SSSS. Staphylococcus scalded skin syndrome. Give me a thumbs up. These are the name of the diseases caused by each of them. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Everyone. So I am done with the toxins. Now coming on the enzymes. So how many enzymes I am going to teach you? The main enzyme here is the coagulase. The main enzyme is the coagulase. There are two types of coagulase, free and bound. What do you mean by free and bound? What do you mean by? So let me draw the bacteria. This is a step aureus. Can you see this is step aureus cell membrane? This is step aureus cell wall. Now coagulase is present inside the cytoplasm also. This is known as free coagulase. And coagulase is present in the cell wall also. This is known as bound coagulase. So coagulase enzyme is present at two places. Coagulase. Coagulase enzyme. In the bound coagulase is also known as clumping factor. The one and the same thing, clumping factor. Everyone give me a thumbs up. So there are two types of coagulase. As the name indicates coagulase, what it will do? It will coagulate the blood. Coagulase will coagulate the blood. So what experiment you will do to prove that the, the bacteria... This is my bacteria, Staphylococcus bacteria. Just a second. This bacteria have free coagulase also, bound coagulase also. It is having two types of coagulase. Free coagulase is an enzyme present in the cell, cell cytoplasm. And bound coagulase is known as clumping factor. It is present in the cell wall. It is present in the cell wall, right? Both of them, both of them convert fibrinogen to fibrin. They will convert fibrinogen to fibrin in the blood and produce a clot. They will convert the liquid blood into clot. So if you take the blood here, the free blood, blood that is liquid here and add step aureus in that. 
सो स्टेप ऑरियस विल कन्वर्ट स्टेप ऑरियस के अंदर जो कॉइग्यूलेस है कॉइग्यूलेस एंजाइम है इस बैक्टीरिया के अंदर फ्री और बाउंड एंजाइम है दैट विल कन्वर्ट द ब्लड इन टू अ क्लॉट so the blood liquid will convert into clot because of this enzyme because inside the blood fibrinogen will get converted to fibrin so that why liquid blood converted to clot whenever you will add bacteria this is how we prove them everyone give me a thumbs up everyone so rishab definitely i will share the notes of neoplasia uh, kindly tag me on the whatsapp or telegram so definitely i will share the notes there everything whatever notes you will require i will share today evening. so okay let me move for that so fibrinogen get converted to fibrin so that liquid blood will convert it into a clot blood because of the enzyme coagulase so this is the thing now there are two type of coagulase free and bound right so as i, I have told you uh, uh how to prove them so the free one is proved by the tube coagulase test and the bound one is proved by the slide coagulase test here we will take slide coagulase test So both the experiments slide coagulase and tube coagulase slide coagulase pe hum same thing slide pe karenge you see uh, what i am doing i am taking a slide i am taking a slide in this slide i am mixing one drop of my bacterial suspension and one drop of the free blood free blood the bacteria contains step aureus the step aureus contain the coagulase the free coagulase the free coagulase will come and convert the blood into clot so here clot the free blood will convert into clot so it is slide we are performing it on a slide so slide is for free coagulase the free coagulase right and the same we can perform that test tube test tube with free you can see the blood converted into a clot so this is tube coagulase the tube coagulase is for uh, i'm sorry tube one is for free and the slide one is for bound you got my point if you are confused i am summarizing this is the bacteria this is the cell wall of the bacteria there is free where is bound this one is the free coagulase present in the cytoplasm and this one is the bound coagulase present in the cell wall right now you want to perform two tests in both of them you will take the serum and convert the serum into the clot for free you take a test tube and do the tube the test in a test tube and here you will do the test in a slide so slide test tube test slide test is done for bound coagulase tube test is done for free coagulase this is the summary so the principle of both of them is same fibrinogen get converted to fibrin and a clot is formed Give me a thumbs up. Everyone, give me a thumbs up. So that is the thing. We are done with toxins. The four types of toxin: cytolytic toxin, enterotoxin, toxic shock syndrome toxin, and epidermolytic toxin. And enzyme with the main enzyme is coagulase. The two type of coagulase: free coagulase and bound coagulase. Everyone, give me a thumbs up. Everyone, jitni audience utni thumbs up. That is the virulence factor. Virulence factor means tell me the name of the enzymes and tell me the name of the toxin. Enzyme me only one enzyme coagulase: the free and bound. toxins with the four toxins the main is cytolytic toxin enterolytic toxin the intestine food poisoning wale uh, epidermolytic toxin toxic shock syndrome toxin the four types of toxin coming on the next topic pathogenesis pathogenesis means tell me the name of the diseases which is caused by step aureus kitni disease karata hai naam batao how many diseases enumerate them and tell me the symptoms of each of them tell me the symptoms of each of them so pathogenesis made three type of diseases step aureus causes three type of diseases some of them are cutaneous cutaneous means superficial superficial on the skin some of them are deep here cutaneous means on the skin and they are superficial deep means organs are involved the internal organs of the body are involved and toxin mediated some of the toxin is mediated so food poisoning is caused by enterotoxin toxic shock syndrome is caused by toxic shock syndrome toxin and sssss that is staphylococcus caudate skin syndrome is caused by epidermolytic epidermolytic toxin give me a thumbs up so these are caused by the toxin and these all are caused by cytolytic cytolytic toxins you know the cytolytic toxins everyone give me a thumbs up everyone give me a thumbs up have you got it so these are the name of the diseases cutaneous me kon kon se diseases hote hain cutaneous me it can be wound infection you know whenever we have wound anywhere so we do a dressing we do a bandage or dressing to protect it from the bacterial infection if we don't cover it the step step aureus can cause the wound infection the burn infection pustule furuncle boil carbuncle style impetigo pampigus neonatorum you can see all of them all of them are pus filled skin infection ye sab aapko hua hoga kabhi na kabhi right pus filled skin infection severe painful severe tender and painful you can see this is furuncle furuncle occurs in the hair follicle can you see furuncle furuncle occurs in the hair follicle pus in the hair follicle so they produce pus everywhere pus in hair follicle is known as furuncle give me a thumbs up cutaneous mein learn 
various names. It can be furuncle, it can be carbuncle, it can be pustule, it can be impetigo, it can be wound infection, burn infection, all of them. So pus in skin, that is cutaneous infection. In summary, give me a thumbs up. Coming on the deep infection, deep infection may various organs are involved. So which organ? Bones are involved, causing osteomyelitis. So pus in the bone, pus in the periosteum, pus in the tonsil, pus in the pharyngitis, pus in the sinusitis, pus in the lungs, that is pneumonia. Septicemia, meningitis, endocarditis, breast abscess, renal abscess. So all body organs may they produce pus. They produce pus and produce severe infection or pain inside the organ. These are the deep infection. So we are done with the cutaneous infection, pus in the skin. We are done with the deep infection, pus in various organs. So learn the list here. Learn the list here. Don't mug up the complete list. You can you can describe them in your own words. The main are the toxin mediated infections. Toxin mediated means the first is food poisoning. The first one is the food poisoning. You know the four toxins. It will cause food poisoning. It will cause toxic shock syndrome. And it will cause SSSS. So these are the three diseases you can see here. These are the three diseases caused by each of them. So food poisoning. As I have told you incubation period is two to six hours. It is due to antrotoxin. You are a toxin say over food poisoning. Is nahi, is nahi. Antrotoxin causes food poisoning. It is due to milk and milk products and fish and meat. So eating fish. So you will get a clue in the question. There is a 46 year old man went to a party, birthday party. On the birthday party, he has consumed some milk product. He has consumed cheese, paneer, you know, some ice cream or he has eaten the fish or some meat. And after that, he, he has, he has vomiting. So he has vomiting followed by diarrhea after two to six hours. That is the first clue. That is the second clue. First clue is the food product and second clue is the incubation period. And after that, the patient have vomiting and diarrhea but it is self-limiting no treatment is required in the next eight to ten hours patient will be all right no antibiotic is required that is food poisoning second is toxic shock syndrome it is caused by toxic shock syndrome or, uh, toxin and here multi-organ failure will occur multi-organ all the organs will fail patient k right especially it is seen in menstruating female who is using tampons who is using tampons may contamination bahut hota hai. is wale toxin ka so that is the clue you will get in a question. That is a young lady, 25 year old lady who is menstruating, using tampons for menstruation. And after that, she presents with multiple organ failure. So it is typical case of toxic shock syndrome. Patient have fever, hypertension, vomiting, diarrhea, scarly form, rash, you know, so toxins. This is due to toxic shock syndrome. The next is exfoliative disease. This one, exfoliative disease also known as SSSS. That is Staphylococcus scalded skin syndrome. Here, the epidermis gets separated from dermis, you know. So can you see the epidermis is separated from the dermis? Please appreciate. And this sign, what is the name of? Yeah, this sign is known as Nicolsi sign. You yeah, like question at Nicolsi sign. Can you see the epidermis is separated from dermis? This sign is known as Nicolsi sign. Give me a thumbs up. Everyone, give me a thumbs up. That is the epidermis is separated from dermis. Please appreciate. This is Nicolsi. Nicolsi sign. Everyone, give me a thumbs up. Can you see epidermis is separated from this is SSSS. That is Staphylococcus scalded skin syndrome. Epidermis separated from dermis, that is Nicolsi sign. You will never forget now. You have seen the images. So I am done with the pathogenesis. So cutaneous infection may pass in the skin. So it can be impetigo, it can be furuncle, carbuncle, pustule, you know, various infections in the skin. Deep infection may pass in various organs. It can be osteomyelitis, it can be pneumonia, it can be meningitis, endocarditis, all organs can be involved. And toxin mediated by food poisoning, the food is meat, fish, and milk products. Incubation period is two to six hours. And diarrhea followed by vomiting followed by diarrhea. Toxic shock syndrome may menstruating female using tampons and multiple organ failure. And SSSS may. The toxin is epidermolytic toxin. And here Nicolsi sign is there. That is epidermis gets separated from dermis. Everyone give me a thumbs up. I am done with pathogenesis also. Coming on lab diagnosis. Who will tell me the specimen of lab diagnosis? Specimen kya hoga? Specimen can be anything. You know, just a second. Uh, bacteriophage typing, I'm leaving. Yeah. Specimen can be anything. If it is a pus, it is a pus filled lesion, you can take pus as a specimen. If it is pneumonia, you can take sputum as the specimen. If it is food poisoning, you can take the vomit as a specimen. If it is, uh, you know, some uh, respiratory tract infection, you can take the nozzle or perineal swabs as a uh, specimen you can take the pieces of hair perineum anything can be the specimen depending on the disease right so what you will do for lab diagnosis the first thing you will do the direct microscopy in direct microscopy you will find can you see here these clusters all of them are gram positive cocci they are present in bunches 
because they are circular they are cocci they are purple in color violet in color they are gram positive and they are present in bunches right you can do the culture you already know the six culture on blood agar it produces produces beta hemolysis on nutrient agar oil paint colonies right so direct microscopy ho gaya culture ho gaya biochemical reaction you already know they are catalase positive right they are coagulase positive coagulase test b you can perform the slide coagulase the tube coagulase we have already done it right serological test may you will find antibodies against the bacteria in the blood so in the blood look for the antibodies against the bacteria in the blood so anti staphylolysin is the antibody against the bacteria right so these are the lab diagnosis you can do what is the treatment treatmentally drug of choice is penicillin benzyl penicillin but if the person is resistant to the penicillin give cloxacillin oxacillin fluoxacillin methicillin you can give this so that is the thing right that is the thing so sensitivity to penicillin give penicillin penicillin g is a drug of choice if allergy with penicillin give cefazolin that is cefalosporin and if it is MRSA, that is methicillin resistant step or yes give vancomycin that is the treatment after treatment just a second prophylaxis is there i am done with the first chapter i am done with the first chapter prophylaxis is not really very important you can do by yourself control or prophylaxis so who will help me in revising the first chapter we are done with the first chapter. Now I will move to the second chapter, Streptococcus. First, give me a thumbs up for the first chapter. Everyone, give me a thumbs up. Shall I revise the first chapter? Can we revise the first chapter? Can we revise the first chapter? Everyone, give me a thumbs up. Everyone. Brima, Jamilet, Rishab, Lucky, Osama, Kalma, Radhikrishnan. Can you help me in revising the first chapter? Step Aureus. We are done. So tell me the introduction. Okay. In the introduction, write down the name of the scientist, Sir Alexander, have discovered the bacteria and nomenclature of the Staph aureus. Morphology may, it is no capsule, no motility and no spore. Capsule, motility, spore, everything is negative. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Culture may, I told you six things. What are the six things? Nutrient agar, blood agar, McConkie agar, PPA, phen phenolphthalein, phosphatase agar, milk agar and selective medium you know one one word on each of them i guess you know on nutrient agar oil paint appearance golden yellow glistering colony blood agar beta hemolysis complete hemolysis colorless zone macon keep it pink colonies because of lactose fermentation ppa pe golden yellow will convert into pink on on passing ammonia gas it is an indicator medium milk pe golden yellow oil paint appearance colony selective media are three i told you all three it is salt milk agar manitol agar and the third one was ludlam medium i guess everyone give me a thumbs up yes so culture is done in biochemical properties i told you many biochemical properties the important one are it is catalase positive the first one the first one is the sugars they ferment sugar with acid without gas then catalase positive then lipase positive then phosphatase positive or others may mr vp indole urease you know nitrate gelatin yes of like that after that antigenic structure i told you innermost is the cell membrane then cell wall then capsule so that is the antigenic structure resistance not important virulence factor coming on the virulence factor the two types of virulence factor toxins and enzymes toxins are of four types what are the four types of toxins cytolytic toxin alpha beta gamma delta and pantone valentine give me a thumbs up the second is enterotoxin producing food poisoning the third is toxic shock syndrome toxin produce toxic shock syndrome and the last is epidermolytic toxin causing skin scarlet skin syndrome enzyme may only one enzyme coagulase but it is of two types the free and the bound right so tube test and slide test was done everyone give me a thumbs up coming on pathogenesis the next heading is the pathogenesis you know so pathogenesis may tell me the name of the diseases it causes three diseases cutaneous superficial disease deep disease and toxin mediated disease cutaneous may the various skin diseases, it can be impetigo, pustule, carbuncle, furuncle, burn, wound, infection. Deep may all the organs are involved. Osteomyelitis, endocarditis, meningitis, itis, 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 everywhere. And toxin, there are three toxin valley diseases. The first one is the food poisoning caused by enterotoxin. The second is toxic shock syndrome caused by toxic shock syndrome toxin. And the third one was uh, SSSS, scarlet skin syndrome caused by epidermolytic toxin. That's it. You can describe in your own words. Lab diagnosis me, you already know direct microscopy, culture, biochemical reactions, serology, right? Treatment may drug of choice is penicillin G. But if the person is allergic or uh, to the penicillin or resistant to the penicillin, the second drug of choice 
is cephalosporin. It is cephalosporin or cephalosporin. That's it. Everyone give me a thumbs up. I am packed with the first chapter. Shall I start the next chapter? Are you people interested? Shall I start the chapter number two? Chapter number two is streptococcus pyogens. Shall I start it? If yes, everyone give me a thumbs up. Shall I start the second? This is how you have to learn the bacteriology. So let me start the second chapter, streptococcus now. So, as I have told you, staphylococcus and streptococcus, both of them are gram-positive cocci. Both of them are gram-positive cocci. So, it is the catalase, catalase test which differentiates staphylococcus and streptococcus. If it is catalase positive, it is staphylococcus. If it is catalase negative, it is streptococcus. It is streptococcus. So, let me start streptococcus now. To differentiate, first apply catalase test. Catalase negative is the streptococcus. I'm starting with streptococcus, which is catalase negative. Right. Just a second. Let me start the next chapter. Streptococcus. Okay. So we will start with the classification of the streptococcus. We will start with the classification of the streptococcus. You can see I'm starting the second chapter, streptococcus. Right. So classification, first we will divide catalase positive, catalase negative. Catalase negative is the streptococcus. And that is the first difference, catalase positive, catalase negative. The next difference is the arrangement of the cocci. Uh, here, bunches are there in staphylococcus. In streptococcus, they are arranged in chains. So we already know that. Let me start with streptococcus, right? Streptococcus ke introduction may, you can write the name of the scientist who has discovered it. The name of the scientist is Bill Roth. Bill Roth. Bill Roth has discovered streptococci first time. Bahan pe, um, in staphylococcus, the name of the scientist was Sir Alexander. And here the name of the scientist is Bill Roth. Bill Roth. So A, B, Alexander and Bill Roth. That is the name of the scientist that, is, that, that have discovered them. After that, coming on the classification. Coming on the classification. So here in step aureus, the classification was very simple. It was based on coagulase. If it is coagulase positive, it is step aureus. If it is coagulase negative, it is step epidermitis. Only two steps are there. But here, classification is somewhat very difficult. In streptococcus pyogens, classification alag se, after three mark ya five mark question aata in university exam. And many MCQs from the classification of the streptococcus. So, classification is big one. We will divide them for, or based on four criteria. You can see the yellow marking here. Based on the four criteria, one by one, we will divide them. First, take the streptococcus. We will divide them based on oxygen requirement, right? If they are obligate anaerobes, that is strict anaerobes, these are peptostreptococcus that are not in our syllabus. Just learn the name. Obligate anaerobic streptococcus are peptostreptococcus. These are the peptostreptococcus. And the aerobes one, the aerobes one, if they are aerobes one, the second criteria, we will see the hemolysis. So three type of hemolysis on the blood agar, alpha, beta, and gamma. Alpha, beta, gamma. Alpha may uh, there are, uh, it is known as viridians group. Here, here uh, main bacteria is streptococcus viridians. Streptococcus viridians will be the main bacteria and streptococcus pneumonia. The two bacteria come in alpha. Gamma may anthrococcus will come. Beta wale ko further divide karenge. Beta wale ki cell wall. We will see the cell wall of the beta. In the cell wall of the beta, there is a carbohydrate. The name of the carbohydrate is C-carbohydrate. Based on the C-carbohydrate, we divide them into 21 types. And this classification was done by a scientist known as Lensfield. That's why known as Lensfield group. I will tell you again. Don't worry. First listen once, then I will draw it for you. Lensfield classification, it is divided into 21 types from A to W. You can count from A to W. The most important is the A. A. A1 is known as streptococcus pyogens. Usko hum further divide kar rahe based on a protein in the cell wall. M protein in the cell wall. This classification is done by Griffith and based on that it is divided into 80 types. 80 types 1, 2, 3 till 80. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Everyone. So see here. So first you take gram positive cocci and do catalase test. Catalase test. Based on the catalase test you divide them catalase positive, catalase negative. Catalase positive is staphylococcus that is not my chapter. Catalase negative is streptococcus that is my chapter. So start with streptococcus. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Now, the second criteria we are selecting is oxygen. Based on oxygen, they are aerobic or strict anaerobe. If they are aerobic, aerobic or facultative anaerobic, or they are obligate anaerobic, anaerobic. If they are anaerobic, it is peptostreptococcus. That is not in my syllabus. Aerobic one are in the syllabus. Aerobic one ko further hum divide karenge based on blood agar, hemolysis on the blood agar. Blood agar pe hemolysis dekhenge. So it is of three type, alpha, beta, gamma. The three type of streptococcus are there. The streptococcus which show alpha hemolysis, there are two. 
कार्बोहाइड्रेट इन सेल बॉल carbohydrates the name of the carbohydrate is c carbohydrate in the cell wall so c carbohydrate in the cell wall is 21 types that is a to w you count a b c d e f g h i j k l so till w it is 21 types so a b c d e f g likewise till w it is 21 types this classification is done by a scientist known as lensfield so this is known as lensfield classification give me a thumbs up he has classified the beta hemolytic streptococcus into 21 types based on the c carbohydrate present in the cell wall give me a thumbs up out of which the most important is the a a ka naam kya hai what's the name of the a a is streptococcus pyogenes the main streptococcus the hero the main streptococcus streptococcus pyogenes the prototype give me a thumbs up further we will divide them based on another thing in the cell wall now this time in the cell wall i will look for protein m protein not c carbohydrate both of them are present in cell wall one is carbohydrate in the cell wall the c carbohydrate that is done by lens field one is m protein m protein is of 80 types that is 1 2 3 4 till it is 80 so this one the type a is divided into 80 types and this classification is done by griffith griffith is the name of the scientist so griffith classified type a into 80 types based on m protein in the cell wall and lensfield classified the beta hemolytic one into 21 types based on the c carbohydrate in the cell wall this is the summary my, my i'm crystal clear in my concepts yes or no say yes or no everyone give me a thumbs up if you got the classification so how we classify streptococcus first we take gram positive cocci and we apply the first test catalase catalase positive catalase negative If they are catalase positive, they are staphylococcus. If they are catalase negative, they are streptococcus. We all know that. So streptococcus को पकड़ के next page पे चलो. Let's take streptococcus. Streptococcus को first we divide based on oxygen requirement. They are aerobe कि they are anaerobe. Anaerobe, <coughs> obligate anaerobe. Aerobe or anaerobe. If they are anaerobe, they are pepto streptococcus. If they are aerobe If they are aerobic, then we will further classify them on the next page. Let's take aerobic. Let's take aerobic streptococcus. We will classify them based on hemolysis on the blood agar. On the blood agar, we will take the hemolysis, right? Now they are of three type: alpha, beta, gamma. Alpha, beta, gamma. Alpha or gamma ko yahi pe nipta do. Main is beta. We will take it on next page. So alpha are only two. What are the two alpha? Streptococcus pneumoniae. And streptococcus viridans. That's it. I will teach you after after beta, right? And in gamma, it is enterococcus. Enterococcus. Ye bhi baad mein padenge. The main is beta. Let's take beta on the next page. Beta streptococcus divided by one by one by two criteria. The first one is the carbohydrate content in the carbohydrate content in the cell wall. That is C carbohydrate. The C carbohydrate is twenty one type. That is A to W. so we divide them into 21 type a to w and this classification is done by lensfield so lensfield is the name of the scientist who has classified the beta hemolytic streptococcus into 21 types based on the c carbohydrate in the cell wall and the names are a to w you can count them they are 21 everyone give me a thumbs up a is most important the name of the a is streptococcus pyogenes the name of the a is streptococcus pyogenes now we will divide the streptococcus pyogenes further into uh, 80 types based on m protein in the cell wall this time again we are taking the cell wall but not carbohydrate content in the cell wall we are taking protein in the cell wall the name of the protein is m protein m protein in the cell wall is divided into 80 types 1 2 3 4 likewise till 80 and this classification is done by griffith so this is the final final classification so classification come for three marks so you have to draw everything like this as i have drawn here draw like this and describe them so first take the hemolysis so hemolysis ke basis pe alpha alpha mein aapka streptococcus viridans aur streptococcus pi uh, pneumococcus aa jayega then take beta alpha beta then beta beta pe we will classify them separately and gamma mein no hemolysis it is anthrococcus alpha beta gamma this is alpha this is beta this is gamma you got my point alpha means partial hemolysis green zone beta means complete hemolysis colorless zone and gamma means no hemolysis 
you can see the example alpha me two examples are streptococcus pneumonia and streptococcus viridans gamma me only one example anthrococcus beta ko further we will define from a to w a to w ko further define karenge so beta one are further classified from a to w based on the lens field classification based on carbohydrate content in the cell wall carbohydrate c it is based on 21 types a to w without i and j total a to w these are lens field groups the main are a b c d and g ye paanch sabse zyada hain right now based on the uh, protein m protein component in the cell wall m protein component in the cell wall we divide them into 80 types and this classification is done by the griffith that's why known as griffith classification so this is the complete classification in front of you you can see first based on oxygen requirement it is aero and aero then based on hemolysis it is alpha beta gamma beta wale ko pakad lo based on group c component in the cell wall griffith classification based on m m component in the cell wall uh, lens field classification and griffith classification this is not easy i cannot tell you so this is the complete classification in front of you everyone give me a thumbs up i am teaching you group a so group a b c d everything is in our syllabus the main is group a group a lens field group a the name is streptococcus pyogenes so let's start this one this is the main main bacteria in entire streptococcus there are more than 80 streptococcus are there but i cannot teach you all 80 na i will teach you the main ones so from beta beta hemolysis i will teach you this one beta me group a and from alpha i will teach you streptococcus pneumoniae later on first streptococcus pyogenes karte hain it shows beta hemolysis and streptococcus pneumoniae shows alpha give me a thumbs up based on the hemolysis on the blood above gamma me anthrococcus are really not important give me a thumbs up let's start streptococcus pyogenes let's start streptococcus pyogenes everyone give me a thumbs up so introduction me you have already written the name of the scientist classification we have already done let's come on morphology who will tell me the morphology morphology you have to tell me five things whether it is gram positive or gram negative whether it is cocci or bacilli whether it is capsule forming yes or no whether it is spore forming yes or no and whether it is motile yes or no who will tell me the answer i am asking all the questions about streptococcus pyogenes who will tell me of course it is a gram positive cocci it is not gram negative it is not bacilli and no capsule no spore no motility again all the three three things are negative so capsule negative spore negative motility negative like step aureus capsule negative spore negative motility negative ye dono mein common hai both of them are gram positive cocci gram positive cocci that's it right so it is a gram positive cocci the only difference it occur in clusters bunches and it occurs in chains that is the difference in morphology of the two everyone give me a thumbs up you can see the chains they are present in the form of the chains longest chain hoti hai streptococcus salivarius ki is pe mcq aata hai one liner longest chain kiski hai aaj tak streptococcus salivarius right so that is the thing they are non motile non spore forming non capsule capsule exceptionally present in some of them only group c mein capsule hota hai otherwise capsule is absent and here capsule is made up of hyaluronic acid hyaluronic acid otherwise capsule is absent see the mnemonic of the capsulated bacteria pakiv mcv streptococcus is not coming see the mnemonic of spore forming bacteria bsc chemistry streptococcus is not coming and see the mnemonic of motile bacteria cute baby sleeping very protective solution hcl streptococcus is not coming it is non motile so the summary is in front of you the first chapter was staphylococcus staph aureus and the second chapter i am teaching you streptococcus streptococcus pyogenes so both of them are gram positive gram positive both of them are cocci cocci these are the similarities right now coming on the differences differences it occurs in bunches it occurs in chains right um this occurs in bunches this both of them are capsule negative motile negative spore negative capsule negative motility negative spore negative capsules are exceptionally present in some of strains of both of them everyone give me a thumbs up everyone so that is the difference is still now and this one is catalase positive this one is catalase negative so let me start with streptococcus pyogenes we are done with morpho also streptococcus pyogenes may we have seen the introduction the scientist is bill roth we have seen the complete classification classification is step by step start with catalase uske baad oxygen requirement uske baad hemolysis on the blood agar uske baad group c carbohydrate aur uske baad m protein so based on these five criteria one by one by one we will divide them so complete tree contains the five criteria one by one so this is how we will divide them morphology may you write no capsule no spore no motility and these are gram positive cocci 
coming on culture coming on culture i will enumerate four five culture medium and write one one line in front of them everyone write one one line in front of them i'm coming on the culture characteristics everyone give me a thumbs up i'm starting with the culture characteristics so you write one one line in front of them so culture characteristics let me start with culture characteristics the first is the blood agar so i'm teaching you streptococcus pyogenes which is beta hemolysis so on blood agar it show beta hemolysis beta hemolysis you know it is the you can see the colonies on the blood agar let me zoom it let me zoom it so this is the zoom version see the colonies around the colonies appreciate the clear zone clear zone so complete hemolysis it is beta hemolysis that is complete hemolysis because it is streptococcus pyogenes if i say streptococcus pneumoniae or streptococcus viridiens they will show alpha hemolysis if i say enterococcus it will show gamma hemolysis but streptococcus pyogenes is beta hemolysis right it is beta hemolysis coming on selective media selective media sare bacteria ka pata hona chahiye you know the three selective media for staphylococcus now learn two selective media for streptococcus streptococcus pyogenes the first is crystal wallet blood agar in the blood agar add crystal wallet so that is the crystal wallet blood agar the first selective media this crystal wallet kill all other bacteria except streptococcus pyogenes so only streptococcus pyogenes will survive on the plate all other bacteria will die that's why it is a selective media the crystal wallet is a selective media for streptococcus pyogenes the second is pnf what is the full form of pnf p is polymyxin b it is a antibiotic n is neomycin it is a antifungal neomycin and f is fusagic acid it is also antibiotic so when you add polymyxin neomycin and fusagic acid on a blood agar these three things you have to add so basically you take a blood agar you take a blood agar and add polymyxin in that neomycin in that fusagic acid in that p and f so all other bacteria will be killed by this all other fungus will be killed except strep streptococcus pyogenes only streptococcus pyogenes will survive that's why pnf is a selective media for streptococcus pyogenes what are the two selective media tell me the selective media for staphylococcus and tell me the selective media for streptococcus who will tell me the selective media the three selective media here and the two selective media here who will tell me jamilet would you like to try what are the three selective media for staphylococcus it is salt milk agar here salt milk agar here uh, it is manitol agar here manitol agar and what is the third one ludlam medium you can't forget ludlam medium ludlam agar and here only two are there crystal wallet blood agar and pnf blood agar both of them are blood agar in the blood agar we are adding either crystal wallet or we are adding three things three antibiotic and antifungal p and f are antibiotic and n is antifungal everyone give me a thumbs up i'm trying hard so please learn the selective media here please learn so that's it next is the transport media you know what is transport media what do you mean by here is my patient here is my patient this patient i'm collecting the specimen from the patient whatever is the specimen it can be blood urine feces vomit in a test tube this is my specimen collecting from the uh, patient and this is the laboratory laboratory is at a distance from the patient i'm doing the home collection this is the home collection laboratory is far away this is laboratory so while reaching the laboratory the bacteria and the specimen will die if they are very fragile sometimes the bacteria are very delicate they are very fragile and in the way during transport to the laboratory they will die and while reaching the laboratory when the specimen reach the laboratory you will find no bacteria inside it you will find the specimen doesn't contain any bacteria because all the bacteria are dead on the way only so for that there is a media which is known as transport media so take the specimen in a special media which is known as transport media so that it provides nutrition to the bacteria on the way on the way so bacteria survive on the way bacteria do not die on the way so we use transport media only for delicate bacteria the bacteria are very some bacteria are very delicate so staphylococcus is not delicate that's why there are many wahan pe transport media nahi bataya i didn't told you transport media and staphylococcus because that is not a delicate bacteria but yeah streptococcus pyogenes is a delicate bacteria for that you require transport media the name of the transport medium is spikes medium it is spikes medium we, we take blood agar and we add crystal wallet and sodium azide in that containing these two things the blood agar is now known as spike medium so what is spike medium what is the composition of spike spike medium kya hota hai what is the composition it contains two things it contains blood agar containing two things blood agar contains uh, sodium azide sodium azide 
and crystal ovulate. The combination of blood agar along with these two is known as pipe medium. And pipe medium is the transport media for the streptococcus pyogens. It is a delicate, delicate organism. Last one is the liquid. It is not very important. Powdery deposits colonies are there. So let me tell you the summary of the culture here. Let me tell you the summary of the culture. Who will tell me the culture? The summary of the culture. Tell me blood agar. Tell me selective medium. Tell me transport medium. That's it. Who will tell me the summary? Who will tell me the summary? On blood agar, write down beta hemolysis. That's it. On selective media, write down two medium. Crystal wallet blood agar and PNF blood agar. Blood agar containing crystal wallet and PNF. Transport may write down pike. Pike media. Learn the spike yeah, MCQ ke liye bhi important hai. That's it. That's it. You know the culture here in step aureus. Maybe I have culture medium. Batayate. Nutrient agar, blood agar, milk agar, McConkey agar. Right? Uh, PPA, phenolphthalein phosphatase agar and selective media. You know one one line for each of them. Everyone give me a thumbs up. This is a way you have to learn the entire bacterial also. We are done with culture. Coming on biochemical reactions for streptococcus pyogens. So I will be a little bit fast. Huh? Coming on the biochemical reactions. Biochemical reactions. The first is catalyst negative. You will say ma'am if it is negative why you are enumerating. Tell me the positive things now. Sometimes negative things are more important than positive. Here it is ruling out something. So Gram positive cocci. It is a gram positive cocci. So, catalyst negative gram positive cocci is streptococcus. Gram positive cocci, which are catalyst positive, they are staphylococcus. So, catalyst negative, it is differentiating it from staphylococcus. That's why saying this is really very important. Yeah, give me a thumbs up. So, they are catalyst. So, in this diagram, this one is staphylococcus and this one is streptococcus. You know the principle. You know the principle. Yes or no? Staphylococcus and streptococcus. You know the principle behind it. Give me a thumbs up. So, catalyst positive, staphylococcus. Catalyst negative, streptococcus. You know the principle. Right. Second, they are insoluble in 10% poly. So why we are doing it like this? Uh, as I have told you, the complete classification uh, based on hemolysis on blood agar, uh, streptococcus are of three types. Alpha streptococcus, beta streptococcus, and gamma streptococcus. Give me a thumbs up. In the alpha, I taught you two. What are the two examples? Streptococcus viridians and streptococcus pneumoniae. Yes, in beta, there are A to W. Total 21 types. But I will not teach you 21. I will teach you only A. I will teach you only A, the first one, the most important, that is streptococcus pyogen. That is my chapter now. And gamma may. There is anthropocus. I am not going to teach you anthropocus. From alpha, I will teach you streptococcus pneumonia later on after completing this. So currently, I am teaching you beta. The A beta. Each am, beta me A wala me padha rahi hu abhi. Streptococcus pyogens. And after that, I will teach you alpha. Right? This alpha one, both of them are streptococcus. Both of them are streptococcus. Streptococcus pneumonia is soluble in bile. It is soluble in 10% bile. If you put 10% bile over the colonies of streptococcus pneumonia, the colonies disappear. Disappear. They are soluble, but they are insoluble. So I am saying a negative finding in streptococcus pyogens to differentiate it from streptococcus pneumonia. Give me a thumbs up. They are insoluble in bile. To differentiate it from streptococcus pneumonia, I am saying this negative finding. So first negative finding, they are catalyst negative to differentiate it from staphylococcus. I am saying it is insoluble in bile to differentiate it from streptococcus pneumonia. That is second negative finding. Third, they comment all sugar. No specific sugar, all sugar. By producing acid, but no gas. Acid to produce hoga, but durram, durram test tube is empty. It doesn't contain bubble, but acid is produced. The fourth is PYR test. The most important test, last test is PYR. What is PYR? If you go with the full form, it is really very difficult. P is pyro, pyro, pyrolidonoid. P is pyrolidonoid. P, Y, Y ye yehi ka ho gaya. And R is nephthyl amides. So that is PYR. So that is PYR, it is having this enzyme, PYR is enzyme that will degrade, degrade the PYR and produce the yellow to pink color. PYR test. In PYR test, you take PYR, it contains the enzyme that can degrade the PYR and produce free naphthyl amide. So this, this compound is yellow color and the free naphthyl amide is pink color. So it is having an enzyme to convert yellow to pink. So yellow to pink color is seen. You can see yellow to pink. Appreciate this yellow to pink change. Yellow to pink change. Give me a thumbs up. Everyone give me a thumbs up. This is a four test PYR test. So till now we have read four biochemical tests. It is catalyst negative. It is bile negative. Bile insoluble. These two are negative. Right. Uske baad they form in sugar with acid but no gas. 
right the fourth is pyr they are pyr positive they convert uh yellow to pink color in pyr because they have an enzyme to degrade the pyr the last and the fifth is bacitrostin sensitivity bacitrostin sensitivity what do you mean by bacitrostin sensitivity bacitrostin sensitivity kya hota hai bacitrostin is an antibiotic listen what you do actually you take a blood agar you take a blood agar and try to grow the colonies of streph streptococcus pyogens so see these are the colonies of streptococcus pyogens which are showing beta hemolysis on blood agar these all are streptococcus pyogens the colonies of streptococcus pyogens right listen this is normal now take another blood agar take another blood agar listen okay just a second take another blood agar on this blood agar what you are basically doing listen take a filter paper you are taking a filter paper and this filter paper is dipped in bacitrocin it contains bacitrocin the antibiotic bacitrocin now try to grow the colonies of streptococcus pyogens on this blood agar containing a filter paper Containing a filter paper containing bacitrocin, so you will see that the colonies are formed. Streptococcus pyogenes ki colonies banegi everywhere it is formed, but not in a zone containing bacitrocin. A five millimeter zone ke beech mein koi bhi colony nahi banegi. Up to five millimeter or ten millimeter, no colony is formed. This is known as zone of inhibition because they are bacitrocin sensitive. Bacitrocin will kill it. Bacitrocin kills the streptococcus pyogenes. That's why they will not form a colony close to the bacitrocin. They will form a colony away from the bacitrocin. So it is a test. It is known as bacitrocin bacitrocin sensitivity test. Bacitrocin sensitivity test. So we do the test like this. Can you see, this is the blood agar. Appreciate the blood agar. On this blood agar, please appreciate this is bacitrocin. A filter paper containing bacitrocin. Can you appreciate the colonies are formed here, 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 but not in a zone containing bacitrocin? Is zone may be colony. That is the non culture we are producing. Give me a thumbs up. This is now step by step. Write down in your own words or language. So, streptococcus pyogens is sensitive to the bacitrocin. Right. So, take a disc of bacitrocin containing itna bacitrocin on the blood agar. Right. You will see streptococcus pyogens have a zone of inhibition that will not form a colony up to 15 millimeter in the zone of the bacitrocin. Bacitrocin ke aas pas ke 15 millimeter zone mein it doesn't produce any, any, any colony. See. See. Everyone see here. Can you see this one is bacitrocin? Please appreciate this is the bacitrocin here. This is the bacitrocin here. So other bacteria, if you if you take any other bacteria, it is forming colonies near bacitrocin also. Everywhere is the colony near bacitrocin also. So this bacteria is not streptococcus pyogenes. No, because it is forming forming colonies near the bacitrocin. But yeah, this bacteria is not forming colony near bacitrocin. It is forming colony away from the bacitrocin. So yes, this bacteria is streptococcus pyogenes. Everyone give me a thumbs up. This test is known as bacitrocin sensitivity. So please, please tell me, all of you tell me biochemical, the five biochemical reactions here. One, two, three, four, five. Who will tell me the five biochemical reactions here? Who will tell me the five biochemical reactions here? The first is catalase negative. The second is bile negative. Bile insoluble or bile negative. Everyone give me a thumbs up. So catalase negative. The first one is the catalase negative to differentiate it from Staphylococcus. Staph aureus. The second is bile negative to differentiate it from Streptococcus pyogen, uh, Streptococcus pneumoniae. The third one is sugar fermentation. They ferment all sugar with acid without gas. The fourth one is PYR positive. The fifth one is bacitrocin, bacitrocin sensitive. They are bacitrocin sensitive. Yes, uh, Jamilet, very good. Uh, as I told you, the various groups, Lensfield grouping, A, B, C, D. So group A is this one, streptococcus pyogens. And group B is streptococcus aljectaceae. That differentiate based on bacitrocin. Bacitrocin sensitive are group A. And bacitrocin resistant are group B. So this diagram which I have shown you now, so the, this diagram is streptococcus aljectaceae. That is group B. And this diagram is streptococcus pyogens. Yes, that you mean, Jamilet, I guess. Yes, yes, you are absolutely right. Yeah, everyone give me a thumbs up. These are the five biochemical reactions you can notice here. Yes, shall I pr proceed ahead? Culture, I have told you three cultures. I have told you blood agar, I have told you transport medium, and I have told you selective medium. That's it. So tell me the summary of streptococcus pyogens regarding culture. Tell me three cultures, one, two, three, the three culture media and tell me the biochemical reactions. Tell me the six, one, two, three, four, five, five biochemical reactions. Who will help me? For the culture, help me. It is blood agar, transport media and selective media. I will fill one, one line around them. 
राइट सो फर्स्ट फिलेट ब्लैक स्पिनिश कल्चर फर्स्ट सो कल्चर में ब्लड अगर राइट ऑन बीजा हिमोलिस कंप्लीट हिमोलिस कलरलेस जोन transport media pipe media you know the composition of pipe media pipe media contains blood agar with sodium azide and crystal wallet and selective media are two what are the two selective media blood agar containing crystal wallet and blood agar containing pnf i guess you know the full form of pnf polymyxin b neomycin and fusidic acid every one give me a thumbs up that is the summary of the culture coming on the summary of the biochemical reaction can you tell me five important biochemical reaction two are negative it is catalase negative and bile solubility negative no bile solubility catalase negative to differentiate it from staphylococcus staphylococcus are catalase positive and bile solubility negative to differentiate from streptococcus pneumoniae that is alpha hemolysis right so because streptococcus pneumoniae is bile soluble apart from its sugar fermentation there is no specific sugar all the sugars it ferment with acid without gas apart from it pyr positive reaction you know what is pyr and apart from it they are basitra basitracin sensitive they form a zone of inhibition around the basitros and filter paper everyone gave me a thumbs up so that is the summary of biochemical reaction for streptococcus pyogen we are done with the culture we are done with the biochemical reaction we are done with the morpho classification intro coming on antigenic structure antigenic structure is not really very important i should skip it resistance is also not important coming directly on the virulence factors now give me a minute to directly jump on the virulence factor now i'm jumping on the virulence factor here also in virulence factor you have toxins and enzymes like staphylococcus you have toxins and you have enzymes here in streptococcus pyogens also the virulence is toxin and enzymes let's finish toxins first the toxins kitne hai yahan pe only two toxins are there in staphylococcus there were four toxins yahan pe in streptococcus we have two toxins we have hemotoxin that degrade rbc that degrade rbc and produce anemia right hemolysis hemolysis they are of two type slo and sls one is heat stable one is heat labile oh, sorry oxygen stable and oxygen labile right so that is hemolysis right second is pyrogenic toxin pyrogenic toxin abc pyrogenic toxin abc i'm not giving so hemolysis are of two types slo and sls based on the oxygen labile and oxygen stable right uh, and pyrotoxin are abc pyrogenic toxin they will produce this pyrogenic toxin will produce fever they will produce rash red color rash so i will give you the description of these in the diseases these are the toxins after toxins coming on the enzymes so what are the enzymes there are various types of enzymes there are four five enzymes you have to enumerate them so they contain dnas don't don't write the test of each of them just um, you know enumerating them is suffice at this point of time streptokinase That is fibrinolysin, hyaluronidase, proteinase, and serum opacity factor, and uh, anidase. These are the various enzymes out there. Enzymes are really not very important. Virulence factor may toxins, enzymes. Here also toxins, enzymes. You should be able to enumerate the four toxins here, two toxins here. Here only one enzyme is there, coagulase, the two type bond, and three. Here many enzymes are there. that is dnas anidase protease you know so various enzymes are there coming on pathogenesis name the diseases caused by streptococcus pyogens pehle step aureus ki revise karo step aureus ki kya kya diseases hain we have done three diseases cutaneous one the superficial one deep one deep organ and toxin mediated toxin mediated mein we have done three that is food poisoning toxic shock syndrome and sssss you know the description of all of them now coming on the pathogenesis we have done the pathogenesis of step aureus now i'm teaching you pathogenesis of streptococcus pyogens in streptococcus pyogens the two type of uh, infections are this one is suppurative that is pus forming and one is non suppurative in which in which pus is not formed these infections are not directly due to bacteria these are antibodies against the bacteria causing these diseases so these are non suppurative one suppurative may respiratory and skin infections are there non suppurative may act uh, rheumatic fever that is uh, rheumatic carditis rheumatic fever and post streptococcal glomerulonephritis are there so here non suppurative one are more important suppurative me to theek hai pus banega respiratory or skin mein so suppurative me respiratory me sore throat is there you know sore throat you see the sore throat pus pus in the tonsils can you appreciate the this is pharyngitis can you appreciate the sore throat scarlet fever pharyngitis in scarlet fever the complete body will become red this is due to pyogenic toxin fresh in the body right that is scarlet fever that is due to suppurative suppurative may pus can form anywhere 
in the tonsil, in the retropharyngeal space, in the ear, otitis media, mastoiditis, Ludwig angina, superative adenitis, DIC, brain, heart, bone, joint, pus is formed everywhere. <clears throat> that is a superative. You see periodontitis. You see pus. So this is pus forming in patient. So pus can be formed everywhere. You have a respiratory thus. Skin may be pus banega. Ipsilis, impetigo, cellulitis, necrotizing fasciitis, toxic shock syndrome. Toxic shock syndrome is caused by both staphylococcus as well as streptococcus. So you can see erypsilis. Erypsilis is pus in the lymphatics. Can you see lymphatics are inflamed. This is erypsilis. Can you see erypsilis? Right. The first is the erypsilis. The second is the impetigo. This is erypsilis. You see lymphatics. The pus in the lymphatics. The pus in the lymphatics. It is looking like a fruit orange. Santra dekha hai? It is known as pedu orange. It is known as pedu orange. It is looking like an orange. So that is erypsilis. Erypsilis looks like orange. Pedu orange. Give me a thumbs up, everyone. Second is the impetigo. In the impetigo, you know, uh, there are multiple pus forming cystic spaces are there. It is looking like honeycomb. Honeycomb. Madhu makhi ka chhatte jasa dekh raha hai. So it is looking like honeycomb. This one is looking like impetigo. That is pedu orange. So erypsilis and impetigo in both of them pus is formed. Ultimately, pus is formed. So, cellulitis is also there. Severe pus forming infection in the deep spaces, right? Necrosis can occur because of the pus, necrotizing fasciitis, and toxic shock syndrome. So these all are suppurative infections, the ones which are suppurative. Suppurative respiratory may sore throat, pharyngitis, you know, scarlet fever, yes, sab hai. Or skin infection may it is impetigo, erypsilis, cellulitis, necrotizing fasciitis, yes, sab. So, the pus forming infections are there. Respiratory ones, skin ones. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Others me theek hai. Others bhi ho sakta hai. Bahut sara. Coming on non-superative one. The main one are here the, are the non-superative one. The main difference here, the non-superative one, bacteria do not cause these diseases. Antibodies against the bacteria cause these diseases. There are two diseases. Acute rheumatic fever and post-tractocopal glomerulonephritis. Let me teach you rheumatic fever. Acute rheumatic fever. Acute rheumatic fever me what is the problem? See here. You see this is a child. This child is having pharyngitis. Pharyngitis who are group A beta streptococcus pharyngitis that is streptococcus pyogens. That is streptococcus pyogens is causing pharyngitis. Can you see the bacteria in the tonsil? You will see, ma'am. You will see, ma'am. It is very common that the child is having pharyngitis due to streptococcus pyogens. Yes. So the child is having pharyngitis due to streptococcus pyogens. So body is forming antibodies against it. Can you see? These are the antibodies. These antibodies will kill the bacteria. It will form antigen antibody complex and the bacteria will be killed. So what is the problem? What is the problem? There are five organs in human body. Heart, that is heart, brain, skin. Just below the skin, there is subcutaneous tissue and joints, the joints. So brain, heart, skin, just below the skin, subcutaneous tissue and joints, right? These are the five organs on the human body that have antigen. That has antigen which is similar to the bacteria. So the antibodies will get confused. These antibodies will get confused. They will think that this is also bacteria. And they will form antigen antibody complexes with these five organs producing five diseases. Producing five diseases. In the heart, it produces rheumatic heart disease. In the brain, it produces syndrome scoria. In the skin, it produces erythema marginatum. In the subcutaneous tissue, it produces subcutaneous nodules. And in the joints, it produces migratory polyarthritis. So all these five diseases together known as rheumatic fever. You tell me, rheumatic fever kisne karaya? Does bacteria cause the rheumatic fever? No. My answer is no. Bacteria is killed. Bacteria do not cause rheumatic fever. The antibodies against the bacteria, they are cross-reacting. They are doing molecular mimicry and cross-reacting with these five organs. And the antibodies against the bacteria is causing five diseases, that is rheumatic fever. That's why rheumatic fever is non-suppurative. Pus is not formed. Pus wahi banega jahan bacteria hoga. Where there is bacteria, pus is formed there only. Here there is no bacteria. The antibodies against bacteria causing destruction of these five organs. So the antibodies against the bacteria, they will not form pus. And these five diseases together, that is in the heart, there is rheumatic carditis. Carditis. In the brain, it is syndrome scoria. In the skin, it is erythema marginatum. In subcutaneous tissue, it is subcutaneous nodules. And in the joints, it is migratory polyarthritis. These five things together known as rheumatic fever and this rheumatic fever is not caused by the bacteria. It is caused antibodies against the bacteria and that's why it is non-suppurative. That's why it is non-suppurative. Give me a thumbs up. That is rheumatic fever. When I say it is multisystemic involving five systems. 
it is post tractococcal it always occurs first bacteria will come then antibodies are formed without bacteria it cannot cause it is non superative because bacteria is not forming the pus and involves five organ this is the definition of rheumatic fever give me a thumbs up it is a autoimmune disease can i say yes it is a autoimmune disease where antibodies against the bacteria are cross reacting with the five organ and damaging five organ producing five diseases in five organ the five diseases together known as rheumatic fever so this is not caused by bacteria this is caused by antibodies against the bacteria again and again i am insisting on this one you got my point that's why it is non superative so a susceptible host is the child the child is having pharyngitis or tonsillitis after that antibodies are formed these antibodies are acting as a auto antibodies and they are cross reacting with the five with the five organs which is having same antigen as that of bacteria the name of the antigen is nag that is n acetyl glucosamine this antigen is present on the bacteria also and this antigen is present on the five organ also so the antibodies will get confused and they will consider the five organs as the bacteria the cells of the five organ as bacteria and they will cause disruption there give me a thumbs up this mechanism is known as molecular mimicry you know mimicry mimicry and nakal utarna and cross reactivity here the organs the five organs of the human body that is brain heart skin subcutaneous tissue and joints these are doing mimicry with the bacteria these five organs are doing molecular mimicry with the bacteria because they have same antigen as that of bacteria and because of which the antibodies are doing cross reactivity so the name of the mechanism is molecular mimicry and cross reactivity give me a thumbs up everyone give me a thumbs up these five are the jones major criteria that is about the rheumatic fever that is about the rheumatic fever the second is the post streptococcal just a second uh glomerulonephritis the second one is the post streptococcal glomerulonephritis acute post streptococcal glomerulonephritis this one is also not caused by bacteria it is also caused by antibodies against the bacteria so imagine what is the problem here uh imagine a person a child or an adult in which group a beta hemolytic bacteria that is the same bacteria streptococcus pyogens that is causing either pharyngitis or skin infection wahan pe sirf pharyngitis hi tha yahan pe pharyngitis skin infection kuch bhi chalega right from there the bacteria is going to the blood from blood it is going to the kidney okay i will draw it for you let me draw a person in front of you this person these are the tonsils of the person this person is having infection by streptococcus pyogens either pharyngitis or skin infection either pharyngitis or skin infection from here the bacteria is moving to the blood vessel this is the blood vessel the bacteria is moving to the blood vessel from the blood the bacteria is moving to the kidney these are the kidneys of the person this bacteria is moving to the kidney it is entering inside the kidney so first from the pharyngitis or the skin infection the bacteria is moving to the blood this is blood vessel from blood vessel it is going to the kidney in the kidney there is a membrane filtration barrier what is filtration barrier in filtration barrier in the center there is a basement membrane on one side there is endothelium this is endothelium on one side on other side there is epithelium that is visceral podocytes you know that inside the kidney this is filtration barrier so this bacteria can you see this is the bacteria on entering inside the kidney it will get deposited here on the podocyte on the podocyte it will get deposited here now this is known as planted antigen this bacteria is known as planted antigen right now body will form antibodies against the bacteria body will form antibodies in the blood against the bacteria wo antibody bhi piche piche aayegi the antibody will also come behind the bacteria and get deposited here get deposited here so antigen antibody complexes are formed inside the kidney and that will cause destruction of this membrane so the person have glomerulonephritis because the glomerulus is destroyed glomerulonephritis because the filtration barrier is destroyed the podocytes are destroyed so there is leakage of the protein and this is known as glomerulonephritis this glomerulonephritis is known as post streptococcal glomerulonephritis so kisne karaya glomerulonephritis you tell me alone bacteria is causing no bacteria along with antibody so antigen along with antibody together the complexes are formed here antigen antibody complexes are formed and that complexes are causing the destruction that's why again it is caused by antibody and this one is non superative non superative ke do examples hain right the first one was a rheumatic fever the second one is the post streptococcal post streptococcal glomerulonephritis in post streptococcal glomerulonephritis only kidney is involved but in rheumatic fever five organs are involved you know and both of them are due to antibodies against the bacteria so when the bacteria is coming causing pharyngitis or skin infection from they are going to the blood from they are going to the kidney in the kidney get deposited on the visceral podocyte not is known as planted antigen 
एंटीबॉडी भी जाएगी पीछे पीछे एंटीबॉडी विल ऑल्सो फॉर्म एंड गो बिहाइंड बैक्टीरिया एंटीजन एंटीबॉडी कॉम्प्लेक्सेस आर फॉर्म एंड इट विल लीड टू ग्लोमेरुलोनेफ्राइटिस एवरी वन गिव मी अम्स अप दैट इज हाउ दैट इज हाउ यू कैन सी जस्ट अ सेकेंड that is how you can see it is psgn these two are non superative so we are done with the pathogenesis in the pathogenesis there are some superative there are some non superative infections in the superative diseases respiratory and skin infections are there respiratory mein sore throat pharyngitis tonsillitis scarlet fever skin infection mein impetigo honeycombing appearance and erysipelas pedo orange appearance cellulitis necrotizing fascia just ye sab hain others are also there here acute rheumatic fever mein five organs are involved heart brain skin subcutaneous tissue and joints post atypical glomerulonephritis mein only kidneys involved having glomerulonephritis right both of them are not due to bacteria they are caused by antibodies against the bacteria that's why known as non superative give me a thumbs up we are done with the pathogenesis also can you compare the pathogenesis of strep aureus and strep pyogenes will you help me in comparing the pathogenesis that is the name of the diseases for strep aureus and streptococcus pyogens we have completed two chapters na we are we are going to complete the second chapter also can you help me i have told you here divide them into three categories here divide them into two categories can you tell me jamilet others can you tell me the three categories here here cutaneous infection the superficial one deep infections the organs are involved and the third one were toxin mediated right superficial infection mein can you enumerate it can be many it can be a uh, carbuncle furuncle pustule wound infection burn infection it can be many deep infection may all organs having pus osteomyelitis meningitis endocarditis pneumonia appendicitis all organs having pus and toxin mediated may there are three what were the three food poisoning caused by enterotoxin ssss caused by epidermolytic toxin and the third one is toxic shock syndrome caused by toxic shock syndrome toxin so name the toxin which is causing these three diseases that's all about the strep aureus coming on streptococcus pyogens in the streptococcus pyogens there can be superative and there can be non superative right in the superative basically they are of two type res respiratory infections and skin infection and others are there respiratory mein sore throat pharyngitis tonsillitis right skin infection mein two are main erysipelas having pedo orange appearance and impetigo having honeycombing appearance apart from it there can be cellulitis necrotizing fasciitis right non superative may there are two the most important rheumatic fever tell me the pathogenesis how it occurs how five organs are involved and post streptococcal glomerulonephritis tell me the pathogenesis how it occurs i told you the flow chart of both of them this is how you have to describe the pathogenesis of the two bacteria give me a thumbs up everyone give me a thumbs up we are done with the pathogenesis of the two bacteria yes coming on the lab diagnosis we have done the lab diagnosis of strep aureus now i'm teaching you lab diagnosis of streptococcus pyogens you tell me the specimen what is the specimen for lab diagnosis what is the specimen the specimen will be different for acute infection superative infection and different for non superative in superative it will be pus it will always be pus because pus is formed now in non superative pus is not there blood is the specimen inside the blood you will get the antibodies right in superative it can be the nose throat uh, throat swab no swab or it can be pus but any specimen collected it should be transported in pipes medium because it is a delicate bacteria it will die during the transport right you will do microscopy culture bio can you already know the microscopy on microscopy gram positive cocci in chains they are visible culture you already know the three culture medium you already know the blood agar you already know the selective medium and you already know the transport medium biochemical reaction the five biochemical reaction they are catalase negative they are they are bile insoluble bile solubility negative they are sugar fermenting all sugar ferment with acid without gas they are pyr positive and they are basitra sun sensitive so apply these biochemical reactions serology you will get antigen and antibody basitra sun susceptibility right so these are the test you should know okay just a second so these are the test you must appreciate give me a thumbs up i'm done i guess i am done coming on the treatment and lab diagnosis uh, prophylaxis treatment may drug of choices again panacea if penicillin is uh, allergic or penicillin is resistant go with cephalosporin go with cephalosporin or erythromycin that is the second drug of choice prophylaxis is not important i am done with the two chapters everyone give me a thumbs up 
everyone i am done with the first two chapters the biggest chapter in the entire bacteriology now the upcoming chapters the remaining chapters are very small small so i will take hardly 20 20 minutes in the next next chapter right but the first two chapters are completed step aureus is completed step of the spiogens is completed can any one of you help me in revising the two chapters back to back in a comparative manner yes so introduction may please everyone participate tell me the name of the scientist for step aureus the name of the scientist is alexander and for streptococcus pyogenes the name of the scientist is bill roth do you have any confusion no coming on classification here classification is based on only coagulase coagulase positive is step aureus that is the main bacteria and coagulase negative is step albus or step epidermidis that is non pathogenic here classification is difficult here only one criteria is there coagulase but here five criteria are there first we will classify based on catalase catalase positive and negative with that will differentiate step aureus and streptococcus pyogenes right then hemolysis on the blood now then oxygen requirement that is aerobe and anaerobe then hemolysis on the blood agar alpha beta gamma usme se beta ko pakad lo then c carbohydrate component in the cell wall and then m protein in the cell wall so lens phase classification and drift classification so that will be the complete classification give me a thumbs up everyone give me a thumbs up everyone coming on the morphology in morphology no capsule no motility no spore no capsule no motility no spore exceptions are there in both of them capsule ke mamle mein both of them few species are capsulated but mostly non capsulated both of them are gram positive cocci gram positive cocci but this one occurs in bunches and this one occurs in chains that is about the morphology everyone give me a thumbs up everyone give me a thumbs up everyone coming on culture just a second i will teach you culture now please the mujhe erase karne do coming on culture who will tell me the culture tell me six culture here 1 2 3 4 5 6 and tell me only three culture here who will tell me here okay let me enumerate <coughs> nutrient agar blood agar milk agar mcconkey agar right ppa agar phenolphthalein phosphatase agar and selective medium selective is really very important here only blood agar is there and transport media is there transport because they are delicate and selective media is there who will tell me the answers who will tell me the answers are important here on nutrient agar golden yellow colony oil paint appearance milk agar golden yellow colony oil paint appearance blood agar beta hemolysis right mcconkey pink colony is because lactose fermentation ppa ppa conversion of golden yellow colonies to pink colonies because they are ppa positive selective media are three what are the three selective media salt salt uh, milk agar mannitol agar and ludlum medium Give me a thumbs up. Yahan pe bhi blood agar mein beta hemolysis. Transport media mein pike media and selective media are two. Yahan pe two selective media hai. One is blood agar containing crystal wallet. One is blood agar containing PNF. Polymyxin, neomycin, fusidic acid. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Jitni audience give me thumbs up. So we are done with the culture. The culture back to back comparison with the culture. Biochemical reactions. I have already taught you. You can do it by yourself. I am not enumerating it. Coming on the virulence factor. Okay. just a second coming on the virulence factor of both of them who will tell me virulence factor here the virulence factor here they are toxins and enzymes here also we are having toxins and enzymes here toxins are four types here toxins are two types so toxins yahan pe four types ke kon kon se hain uh, that is cytolytic toxin antero enterolytic toxin epidermolytic toxin and toxic shock syndrome toxin yahan pe hemolysis that is blood ke hemolysis and pyrogenic toxin so you have to enumerate them enzymes yahan pe ek hi important hai coagulase bound and free yahan pe multiple enzymes are there right coming on the pathogenesis we have already come covered the pathogenesis back to back so that is the only uh, you know comparative back to back you can study like this treatment is same for both of them penicillin is the drug of choice if penicillin resistance or allergy is there go with cephalosporin cephalosporin is the second drug of choice for both of them i am done with the first two chapter do you have any doubt or confusion in that if you have please ask You want me to start the third chapter that is pneumococcus? Yes, I will definitely start. Give me a break of 15 minutes, and after that, I will go on episode number two, in which I will start the next chapter. Give me a minute. There are few announcements for you. Let me do the announcements. So, give me a break of just 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, at 12:15 sharp, I will start episode number two of bacteriology. so on the youtube only on same youtube channel where you are attending right now that is unacademy live youtube channel so please subscribe the channel and if you have not subscribed yet 
So subscribe the YouTube channel that is on Academy Live and watch me live episode number two at 12.15 p.m. sharp. Right now, just after 15 minutes. That is my next chapter. I will continue with pneumococcus, then Miseria gonorrhoe, then Miseria meningi meningitis, then Morexilla, then Bacillus, then Clostridium, then Corny bacterium. In this way, I will proceed and complete the bacteriology. As many as I can do. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Now, there is a very important announcement for you people that price hike may be up to 20%. On th 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 today, 31st May. So today is the last day you are getting all the subscription at this price. From tomorrow onwards, there will be 20% hike. All the prices of all subscription, there will be 20% hike. Today, 12 p.m. onwards. So before that, please take the subscription if you want to. Please apply my code suchdev 10 S-C-H-D-E-V such day 10 to get additional 10% off. So that is the biggest, um, you know, uh, uh, announcement for the audience. And uh, okay, there is a special offer for you. If you are taking six months subscription for NEET PG 2023 preparation, you will get two months additional. And offer is today is the last day of the offer. Please grab this opportunity. These are the new batches we have started. For the preparation, an academy light is already out in which you will get only test series. You will get previous year question paper, subject wise, system wise, full length mock test. You will get everything in the test series. We have launched UPSC CMS batch course also, in which batch course also, in which we will help you in preparing for UPSC CMS exams if you are preparing. MBBS Prof 1 is already out in which the Prof 1 student will get anatomy, biochemistry, and physiology classes. At a very nominal price. <clears throat> at a very nominal price, right? Okay, these are the various subscription plans available with us. You can see the various plans. These are the various plus plans. These are the various iconic plans. These are the light subscription. These are the MBBS Prof 1 subscription. These are the UPSC CMS subscription. You can see the various subscription plans in front of you. You can see the price. Price height will occur from tomorrow onwards. If you want to take any subscription, take it today only. And if you apply my code Sachdev10, S-A-C-H-D-E-V, my surname is Sachdev, Dr. Priyanka Sachdev, S-A-C-H-D-E-V, Sachdev without space 10. On any of the subscription, you will get straight forward 10% off. Today, you will get this price. From tomorrow, you will get more prices. So, please grab the opportunity. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Catch me again after 15 minutes at 12.15. Bye-bye. Episode number two of Bacteriology. I'm ending this lecture.